where you put you know, two things that have you know, kind of different connotations. X is a multiplying effect for both sides. Yeah, okay, good point. Good point. Are you all set? Good time. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Tuesday, June 20th meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, I will do the roll call. Tom Harley, I'm here. Surprise. Tony Margiotta is not. Rich Roberts is not. James Hughes is not. George Oikel is not. Joe Hammer is not, but we hope he shows up. Tony O'Mickey, the same there. Tom Dean. Here. And Ryan Allard. Here. And Dave Edwards. Here. Yolanda Antoniak. Yep. And Dan Silver. Present. Thank you. So there's six of us. <clears throat> let, me, let me go through some of the rules. Um, first of all, we have a, a standing committee of nine, and you need five positive votes to pass anything. So just take note, there's only six people here. Um, beyond that, there's going to be a lot of public hearings tonight. The way the public hearing works is that we'll ask the applicant to make a presentation to the commission. The commission will ask questions of the applicant and have a dialogue with the applicant and try and get the facts on the record. Then we will turn to the public, take public comment on the, on, the, um, on the issue. And then we'll ask the applicant to come back up and uh, address those comments and any additional ones that the uh, panel may have, the commission may have. At which point the commission has to make a decision, do we have enough information and, and make a motion on the hearing per se. And then we'll move on to deliberate as to whether the application passes or not. So that's kind of the way the process works. We do have, as I said, six members here. You need five to pass. Um, the first one is kind of uh, uh, controversial. I'm going to ask that somebody make a motion to move on, and, and hopefully we are expecting two additional people to show up. should make it a little uh, better dialogue. So uh, I hope the applicant's okay with this, the applicant for the first one. Would somebody make a motion to move on to the second agenda item? I make a motion. Second. All right. Thank you very much. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. So with that, we're going to move on to item 3.2, which is a public hearing. Um, in other words, if you're here for the trucking one, if you're here for the trucking one, we'll, we'll talk about doing it next. Uh, 61 Arrow Road. So this is item 3.2, a public hearing for application number 1949-17-Z. This is the National Society of Colonial Dames seeking a special permit in accordance with section 3.6, which is accessory buildings and structures uh, to construct a storage shed larger than permitted at 215 Main Street. And it looks like the applicant is making their way to the microphone, which is wonderful. So if you could introduce yourself and uh, tell us what your proposal is, and we'll get started. Yes, good evening. Uh, my name is Dick Agney, uh, property manager for the Webb Dean Stevens Museum at 211 Main Street. Uh, with me tonight is Mark Corba, who is our um, building contractor for this project. Uh, the National Society of Colonial Dames own the Webb Dean Stevens Museum, and they are proposing construction of a storage shed to accommodate uh, for the following reasons. Colonial Dames require storage space for their major fundraiser event held biennially. Uh, it's called the Tags and Treasures Fundraiser. You may have heard of it. And it requires year-round collections of furniture items and home furnishings, which would be stored in this new uh, shed. The anticipated new educational center behind the Webb uh, Dean Stevens Museum will require storage of furniture, chairs, books from the library, uh, shelves and file cabinets along with various collections and items which uh, will have to have been moved from the uh, area that we will uh, take down in advance of the new structure to be built. Uh, storage shelves of uh, exhibit materials and seasonal items uh, is also in need at that museum. And we have no additional storage for the items I've mentioned. The attics uh, are basically full. The basements are low ceilings and uh, inadequate for the storing the types of items that we need to store at the, uh, at the museum. 
So the only small shed that we have now uh, is full of uh, tables and chairs, which we use for the um, weddings and other events that we hold in the barn. So that gives you a little, uh, little background as to our need. And as far as the actual construction, uh, it would be located behind the web barn, probably northwest, and it's about 140 yards from Main Street back along this driveway behind this stand of trees to the, uh, to the location of the, of the proposed shed. And in the, um, in the design of it, we, we use pressure treated materials wherever we can. Uh, for longevity of the of the shed and we are going to follow the six over six double hung windows for uh, use in the uh, areas on all sides of the of the shed as well as a, uh, a barn style door on the south elevation As far as the, uh, the use of this shed, it, again, it would, it would be designed and used based on our previous needs for tags and treasures and other items uh, stored seasonally or throughout the year. Um, and this, this seems to be the, the appropriate size for our needs, 20 by 28. So that's why we, we chose those dimensions, which uh, Mark can speak with, uh, with you on if you have specific questions on the actual construction. All right. Thank you. Questions? So your attention <coughs> is um, pointed to Peter's letter where he kind of, <clears throat> his memo to us indicates that 200 is the, you know, not required to come to us threshold and this is 560 other than that it needs you know that the lighting conform to uh, zoning regs um, but otherwise he's saying it's permittable um, one one question so it's a long way in the back of your property that's very good obviously that's what we like to see when it's a, a large shed but how far is it from the back of the buildings the other way to the well the, the, the colonial buildings <coughs> own about 7.8 acres uh, on this on this piece of property and it's probably this location which is about 140 yards from main street in the back it probably has a little little bit more than that to go beyond there towards the west towards woodland street so it's probably another close to 200 yards past this location to get to the Woodland Street property. Thank you. How about to the north, your chin? On uh, that plan? North would be, I think we have a, uh, a specific guideline there, which is a minimum of five feet. From the, from, from, from so the, I'm thinking about, <clears throat> you, you have a neighbor over there that's looking down at it yeah. as well. Are they, do they happen to be real close? A lot of these lots are. Uh, actually, there's, there's their garage on that property is is very close to where the, the back of of this uh, property okay. so line would be. So it's kind of hidden behind their garage kind of thing? Yeah, at least halfway hidden, I would think, yes. <coughs> um, historic Society did prove this already, so. Historic, Dis uh, historic District Commission, yes. Thank you. Other questions? So just the electricity in this building? There will be a we'll kind of channel uh, tapping off the, uh, the barn, the web barn, which is, uh, slightly uh, east and south to, to get our power. Uh, a couple of questions. Is it my understanding that uh, part of this project uh, involves the demolition of an existing structure on the property? This particular, this is a standalone um, construction and one of the uses of this proper, of this building would be relocation of some items within the museum itself beyond the use that the dames will have for their fundraising uh, every uh, every two years okay so this this is uh, not uh, not accompanied by 
you know, removal or uh, downsizing of any other building on the property, any other structure on the property. So, so There's no other structure on the property that's being eliminated as a consequence of this project. No, if I understand your, your yeah, question. The, Tom, no. the one two further down is a replacement, yeah, largely. Okay. This, this one is a standalone new one. All right. I just thought I heard him say in this introduction that there, there's some, you know, an old storage shed or something that was going to be removed, and I didn't see that in, in the application. Uh, we, we would plan to use some of the uh, space in this new shed to transfer over some of the uh, items that we currently have stored in, in a back section of the web house. And that will be done in, in the process of making room for the new anticipated addition in the back of the web house. All right, secondly, um, is there in, in the proposed uh, shed that uh, you plan on building, uh, there's actually, isn't there a second level? Is that there is. Storage? Yep. Uh, it basically covers, what, about two thirds or so of the floor area? Uh, yeah, we have a knee wall. Perhaps Mark could, could speak to that. Um, we're, we're designing it in such a way that there would be a little more headroom, but not beyond, I think it's a little under 18 feet total on the gables end to uh, accommodate uh, space for storage but being able to walk on the second floor yeah, it's it's really a storage uh, storage deck not a you know, not a place of actual occupancy yes correct. yes correct okay thank you other questions for the applicant all right if you'll bear with us is there somebody from the public who'd like to participate and offer some comments to this application all right. Seeing none, final questions for the applicant? And if not, a motion? Motion to close. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All righty. Discussion? A motion? <clears throat> uh, I, I just want to indicate that uh, this, this application uh, is for a, a part of the museums, which is very much a part of our town. Um, I think that the proposed site, uh, proposed uh, shed uh, fits in with the neighborhood uh, and it meets all the other requirements that we would have for a special permit. I see nothing within our uh, regulations uh, which would be contrary to the intent of what um, the applicant wants to do and I'm very much in favor of approving this application. Okay. Would you like to make a motion on that issue? I think Dan made a motion. Didn't oh, you? yeah. I oh, didn't sorry. make a motion. I'm happy to make the motion. Okay. <laughs> it's, motion. Uh, it was. It was a motion. 19, okay. 19, I make 20. a motion that uh, application number. Uh, let's I, see. One nine four nine dash seventeen Z be approved um, pursuant to with the application. I'll second the motion. Uh, any? Do we need anything? I don't think we need anything about the lighting. I, it's well, just a comment. No, it was in the staff memo, so the, the applicant has to comply. And he also uh, testified that the uh, location would meet the minimum five-foot setback. So uh, I was going to suggest both of those, but they're clearly uh, in the record. And we'll work with the applicant to make sure that happens. Very good. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you. You got it? Thank you, Commissioner. So this one is uh, one, two. So, uh, Peter, Peter, do we do we think Joe's going to come? I'd like to keep it going and have more bodies. He didn't say. Usually, he tells me he, when he isn't coming, and I didn't see that this time. So I'm hoping maybe he is just uh, you know a little bit late. He has he has come late recently. So so there's another what we believe to be a fairly simple one. Um, so if the applicant, the first applicant, would still bear with us, we're going to try and go on to another easy one and let some folks go home if they care to. Can somebody make a motion to bring item 3.4 forward? Is it 3.4 or 3. 3.4 is a garage again in the way in so this more. area. Oh. I'll make a motion to move 3.4 forward. I'll second that. 
Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. So let's let's, let's hear application 1951-17-Z. This is Ashley and Jordan Price seeking a special permit in accordance with section 3.6 accessory uses and structures again of the zoning regs to read this time replace an existing barn garage. <clears throat> And it exceeds the maximum height of 18 feet. This is 118 broad. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Jordan Price. I'm a resident at uh, 118 Broad Street in Westfield. Um, <clears throat> the application uh, is in regards to um, constructing a uh, 22 by 36 post and beam uh, barn in place of an existing uh, structure that has been demolished. Uh, the existing structure was 16 by 40. Um, and specifically, uh, the, the uh, ground to peak on the roof is 22 uh, feet and 2 inches uh, on the new structure, which exceeds the 18 feet. The uh, previous structure, um, the height was 22 feet, um, and the <coughs> property is flanked uh, by neighbors on the north and south that both have um, historic barns um, that I haven't measured but would estimate um, are the height in excess of 22 feet at least um, or like probably 25 to 30. Um, we did receive historic district commission uh, approval um, for the demolition as well as the construction of the replacement structure. Um, uh, as it is in the spirit of the uh, the area and the surrounding buildings, both in size and stature. <clears throat> Thank you. Questions to the applicant? You you say the uh, property <coughs> to the north, to the left, when you're facing your building, has a has a barn as well. Yes. You're proposing this back a little farther than the current one. Uh, it's actually basically in the same footprint as the current one. Oh, it's in one. the same footprint? Yeah. So it'll be, <clears throat> it'll oh, be six feet wider, um, but for all intents and purposes, the same uh, location on the lot. I'm, I'm sorry. I was looking at the proposed pool. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. That never went in uh, from right, 1974. So, so more or less on the same footprint. Where is the barn or secondary structure on the property to the right in relation to uh, it's further it's further back, further back. Um, and it's on the left hand so the north side of that lot on the left side of that lot yeah okay any other questions the applicant all right I'll give him a little more time oh great time question um, and this is uh, really uh, for town planner uh, the only problem with this uh, application that brings him before the commission is the height of the garage? Uh, that is correct. So, um, square footage? Oh, because it's a garage. Yeah, it's under the garage. Yeah, it's the a garage. garage is 800. Uh, yeah, 850. So, um, it is under that requirement. So, it is, in fact, just the, the 22 feet 2 inches uh, uh, versus the 18, 18 foot, which is the maximum. And as the applicant uh, stated, uh, if you did get a chance to go to the property, there are several uh, historic oversized barns, and uh, there are a number of them on, on that side of Broad Street. So uh, in terms of character of the neighborhood and consistent with all of that, uh, I think you'll clearly see that uh, uh, it is uh, actually smaller than some of those that are already out there. Um, just. Um one question for informa primarily informational purposes. I don't think that it affects the, uh, uh, the the feeling of the commission one way or the other. But your the the uh, the angle of of the roof is fairly steep. It's ten, 10 over twelve. Ten to twelve, and most uh, architectural uh, standards for this climatic zone uh, indicate that uh, a I think a five to twelve and a seven to twelve ratio is uh, is adequate. Is there a reason why the angle is so steep? Uh, that's just in order to, uh, to get that historic appearance. That that steep roof line is what you typically see, like on both the barns on the left and the right. They have very steep. Pictures. Right. So it, it's getting back to the kind of the spirit of the historic 
design. Um, the existing barn uh, that was demolished was probably about 10 over 12 as well. Um, and I would estimate the surrounding structures are, are, are similar. So it's a one and a half story um, barn. So that means on the second floor, there's a four foot uh, knee wall or so, exterior knee wall. Um, and that is just part of the, the historic design. Okay. So it sounds like, you know, the, 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 the appearance of the roof line is, is essentially to conform to the historic nature of the neighborhood. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Just, just, a, just a quick question. And you, um, is, is the existing garage uh, standing right now, or has that it already is been not. demolished? Okay. Because I drove by and I didn't see it. Okay. As of last okay. weekend, it is, <laughs> it is not. Uh, I thought I was driving too fast. Okay. Um, okay, but yeah, I did go out, I did go out on, uh, on your street, and it, I did see the same thing, just like what Peter was saying earlier, that there are a number of sheds uh, at those, in that location, barns with a, perhaps even a higher, um, higher elevation than, than what you're proposing, and, and the plans really do seem to really match the historic area of that, um, of that area, so. Anybody in the public that wishes to comment on this application? Seeing none. Make a motion to close. Thank you. Second the motion. Thank you very much. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. So deliberation, motion on the. I'll make a motion to approve application 1951-17Z with Ashley and Jordan Price for this uh, existing barn, for the barn garage that exceeds the maximum height of 18 feet. At 118 Broad Street. Second. Thank you both. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Go build. <laughs> okay, I don't know that we're going to get Joe to join us, so let us move back to item 3.1. This is application 1946-17-Z. Andre Markov seeking a special permit in accordance with section 5.2.H.5. <laughs> Mouthful. Um, permitted principal uses trucking and freight operations. This is to park trucks on the premise at 61 Arrow Road. Is the applicant here? Gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, for those in the audience, uh, okay. this is a continuation from the, a hearing that was opened last week. What do you mean? So, so um, most of us were probably here. So do you have additional information? We talked about um, improvements that might be proposed after you talked to the property owner. And can you update us on that issue? Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I don't hear. Sure. So, so last week when we were in the public discussions, we, <clears throat> we talked about improvements that might be appropriate to go along with the application, and you really needed to talk to the property owner. So has, has any additional information come to us in support of this application in terms of site improvements? Yes, I spoke, and uh, he, I believe, he, well, he did met with Peter Gillespie, they spoke, and uh, the owner said that he's willing to put additional trees for, uh, for, for, uh, for what's, what's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, for screening. So, for, for, yes, for screening, and uh, he's willing to uh, put portion of the parking lot, meaning when you go down the driveway, to make a a, a driveway where the potholes uh, may basically being made. So. Uh, He's willing to do that, it, uh, but to do the whole parking lot, he will not do it because, I, from my understanding, he has no money, and I believe so. But Peter has more information because uh, he spoke more totally with him, so he can explain, I guess. Yeah. So, so Peter does have some more information, and there are a couple of pieces of correspondence that have come in. Um, this was in the last one, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. One you so, gave us tonight? so there are two pieces of correspondence. <coughs> one, um, 
one dated June, one dated today, uh, signed by uh, John Tartaglia. It's a three-page uh, letter. And the applicant just handed it out to us I, again. He gave you a copy. I, we yeah. made you copies as well. And then you should have also uh, received tonight, and maybe that's the confusion. There's another one dated June 19th. Uh, What's well, an email from Mr. Tartaglia. Um, as I said, dated June 19th. Um, not sure if you if you got that one or not, but it is uh, in the file. Maybe not. June 19th. I'm not immediately seeing it. All right, go ahead. So just uh, I'll summarize uh, if you did not see it. Um, from Mr. Tartaglia, I ask that the following statement of support uh, be provided for tonight's meeting. Uh, Town of Weathersfield records indicate that prior to 2004, the property was zoned IP. Uh, and then he goes through a listing of all of the uses that uh, are permitted. I think it's similar uh, in, 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 in tone to the, to the other letter that you received. But nevertheless, he goes through a list of the uses, uh, the industrial uses that, that are permitted back when we had the in IP zone. Um, and then he refers to uh, uh, former sections of the regulations since the building was built in 1965, required loading space. Uh, prior to 2004, the zoning regulations did not regulate trucking or freight operation within the industrial park zones. Prior to November 15, 2004, which is when we changed our zoning regulations, uh, the regulations permitted in front yards, corner yards, and rear yards of the IP zone uh, to be used for loading, shipping, outside storage, and parking. Thank you, John Tartaglia. And, and the letter, <coughs> letter tonight goes through most of that, right? The one that's dated the twentieth. Uh, yeah, it's, it's got a, it's got some additional information or comments, uh, editorial about some of the surrounding properties and his feelings uh, about those properties. But uh, in essence, it talks about the previous approvals for the property and uh, Mr. Tartaglia's um, position on those matters. Okay. So, so when we talked about it last week, um, there was an expectation on my part that, that we were going to get some commitment or resubmission of the site plan or a site plan from which to consider site improvements that would be um, in keeping with the proposed use. And we didn't really get anything other than um, some, some dialogue and a, and a letter. So um, on just you did I did provide you with a memo um, dated June fifteenth, yep. which summarized a meeting that was held on June fourteenth uh, with Mr. Tartaglia in attendance at that meeting. Uh, also, uh, Denise Bradley, assistant planner, and Just Justin LaFountain, um, the zoning officer. Uh, we did meet with Mr. Tartaglia in regard to the last meeting. Uh, we brought up the various issues that were discussed at the June sixth meeting. Um, Mr. Tartaglia, uh, during the course of that meeting, uh, agreed to a couple of things. Uh, he agreed to plant uh, additional landscaping along the Russell Road side of the property to uh, attempt to screen uh, the trucks. Uh, he did express uh, his thoughts that he wasn't quite sure uh, that the uh, soil conditions there would be uh, terribly suitable to that, but he agreed to work with town staff to come up with a a screening plan to kind of fill in the blanks a little bit uh, so that the trucks were not uh, so visible. Um, he agreed to further extend the uh, paved driveway apron into the property. Uh, he indicated that approximately 5,000 square feet of that he would extend into the, uh, into the parking area to maybe come up to where the area is where the potholes have been developing to try and deal with that issue. Uh, but on the uh, most important uh, issue, which was the uh, completion uh, of the parking lot, uh, paving it, uh, he uh, indicated that uh, from a financial point of view, he was not in a position to do that, uh, that it would be cost prohibitive for him to do that, and he would not be doing that as part of this uh, application. So um, that was the gist of the meeting. Um, in terms of what he was agreeable and amenable to do as, as, as they go forward with this. Did he seem to be 
um, intending to provide a site plan to come kind of commit to these type items or uh, he saw part, no, he was, saw no need for a site plan because of the you know, he wasn't agreeable to doing the parking lot uh, he agreed to work with town staff to pick some locations <laughs> but um, since he wasn't going to do the parking lot uh, obviously there wasn't much of a conversation about a, a site plan being submitted to to do that because he he wasn't willing to do that so he sent so we sent his tenants here empty-handed effectively is that kind of what I'm getting well uh, Thomas Harley not really he sent us we came here at the beginning again just to get a permit with most of the information I was aware later on the uh, basically down the road and in reality you should you guys know I cannot speak for him That's the thing. we That's just stand we came to get a permit but mm. Uh, from my understanding, from learning already all this, because I, I didn't know most of it mom, a month ago, uh, like, you, you want a site plan, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what kind of site plan you want, but uh, he agreed to do the trees, I guess that's what the problem with some of the neighbors that live next to me have, because I live over there down the street, and you want the trees. Okay, where you want the trees, point them out, I guess he will do it, but uh, in some locations you cannot put them there, because again, there's a fence, over the fence closer to the road, that's a state property. He cannot put nothing there. That's not his land. Right. Only behind the fence inside, that's his. But it's all rock. So obviously you can't build no trees on the rock because it's not going to grow. It's going to die next week. So he'll do his best, whoever's supposed to come up and show, I guess, from other scent, and he'll do the driveway as Peter explained. But another thing is on a, on a road, on, on that road, there is no drainage, which is its state. Most of the water actually drains into the tinsmith and then it goes further down into the uh, air road. And there's drainage by the Cedar Mountain and Humane Society. There's, there is no drainage on top of the hill. So a lot of water actually drains down into his property with the, uh, with the parking list is, and it causes potholes. But he actually, last week, he bought uh, heavier gravel, gravel, I'm sorry, and he covered it up and he made it, you know, he covered those holes up so it's better. So, and again, when the truck drives by, it's not going to make too much noise. But it's not like the trucks when they come in and they drive 20, 30 miles per hour. The truck goes at least two, three miles per hour slowly, backs in, and that's it. And I read actually uh, some of the comments on the, uh, on the, somebody from our account association posted a bunch of comments on the, uh, on the, uh, mailboxes saying that the trucks come in in and out for the whole day morning and night which is not true the trucks leave in the morning and they come in in the morning before lunchtime that's it and they, the truck is stays till the whole whole day parked until the next morning so whoever made it it's untrue of course and how would you know that if I'm sure everybody works in the morning or whole day. If you leave in the morning, you stay at work. How would you know when the trucks leave or not? Unless you actually sit there by the parking lot on a chair. You mean, you mean social media is not always correct? It's true, but <laughs> I'm sure someone will come up <laughs> after we leave and gonna say something, so I'll speak ahead of them. And I took a picture, of course, of, of that letter, which is, you know, untrue. And these neighbors over here, I recognize them. They're sitting right here, but come on. We are local businessmen. We live in a town, we pay our property tax, we pay our uh, road tax, actually it comes, comes over here for every truck. And it's not $100, $50, it's three, $400 for a truck. So the town makes on us. Why would you want a local business to leave? If we leave, we're gonna have to register somewhere else and then the town doesn't make. And then property tax goes gonna go up. For everybody, in a way. Yeah, um, believe me, I think we understand your argument. Well. <laughs> You're struggling against the property Yeah, owners. but uh, I, I, understand their, I understand their concern and, uh, and, so, and all that, but... Uh, so, so in order, this property had a, an approval once before with a full site plan that, or yeah, at least, at least once before. There's, there is one on the record now that isn't, I, I don't even know if it's expired, but you know, we approved a use and it came with a site plan and the site plan never got done. The site plan is something that the, uh, <laughs> That, that the town can can wave and say you need to do this. I'm struggling with, there's, no even, there's not even a site plan. There's no commitment on this property owner's part as part of this process to do anything except a verbal I'll do. Um, so, so I'm struggling with that. Um, can you, can you um, open the book? 
and, and kind of remind the commission of things that we're supposed to be thinking about when we give special permits and it might be useful for the applicants as well. And while you're looking that up, can you explain to me, um, your tenant, uh, you have these offices. When did you start the lease process? When did you sign leases for the offices and, and what do you do in the offices? About two, three years ago after all this started because from what I understand what happened is we were parking there nobody actually told us that we require any permit which I guess there was no such thing as a permit and uh, and I believe uh, I don't know how it started I, I didn't really go deep into that but uh, yeah. we had to be at he told us and which I guess court told him for us to park there we had to be tenants yeah. okay we became tenants we rented our office we use the office instead of doing uh, most of the business at home, let's say, we just uh, use the office over there and we also at the same time we park. So so we are tenants and we park there. So it's not that we just, just park there. We have, uh, you have, you have offices and space like everybody else, like that long 18-wheeler truck that I told you last time that he actually fixes cars and uh, uses them for racing. Right. So he, he parks there. He has a unit seven, I believe, or something like that, or eight. So, um Plus or, plus or minus, when did you enter into the leases? Uh, leases, we had, I, I've been with it about 10 years or so. You've had a lease? There. Oh, I'm sorry, with the, with the rental, uh, about three years ago or so, okay. of the, of the uh, office. But parking, I had a lease with parking for about 10 years or so. And, you know, back then, nobody said nothing about it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to remind um, the commission and the public uh, that Article 8 is what special permit criteria, uh, those are the special permit criteria that we're supposed to consider, 8.1 being suitable location, 8.2 being neighborhood compatibility, 8.3 being appropriate structures and landscaping, 8.4 suitable access and parking, 8.5 overall circulation, 8.6 adequate public utilities, 8.7 is environmental protection and conservation, 8.8 consistent with purposes, and then other considerations is 8.9, lighting, signing, um, you know, pedestrian bicycles, that, that sort of thing, and enhancing community development. Those are the type of issues that we're supposed to consider while providing a special permit. And a special permit means the reason you're getting a special permit is, is that it's not, it's not allowed by right. You don't just automatically have the right to do what you're doing. You have to get a special permit. So that's the process, all right? And so we are supposed to decide whether what you're asking to do fits into these criteria, okay? I'd like to add question. one thing. In Take addition, up. Mr. Chairman, that to get into the special permit criteria, there first has to be a showing that they meet the zoning regulations. And the zoning regulations require that this type of use, as far as I'm concerned, requires the entire lot to be paved and it retires total screening. Those are the two things uh, that this application, quite frankly, lacks for, each, for us to even get to the question of a, the special permit uh, requirements because I'm surprised that he's not, well, I'm not surprised, but we asked that he be here today. I'm upset that he's not here, but I'm not surprised. But at the same time, uh, he sends you down to do his, his work for him. That's not right. Uh, and I have a, a major problem in supporting an application that doesn't begin to meet the zoning requirements of the town of Wethersfield. And unless it meets those zoning requirements, I don't even want to even look at the, the, the other uh, criteria uh, because how can we apply the criteria when it doesn't meet the basic? So, so the only nuance that I would add to that is that if there's a plan to make it compliant, right? If, yeah. Because that's how we approve these things. I've got a plan to do this to the site and the approval is contingent upon making those improvements. And so it's that, it's that commitment and a plan of action that comes with a special permit application that honestly we don't have other than a verbal uh, type of a thing and there's no definition to the trees where they're going or, or even a definition as to where the parking that he, uh, excuse me, the paving that he is proposing to do or what its, what its uh, composition is. You know, you could pave it with an inch and it'll be worthless in, a, in, in three months with these trucks who are driving out of that kind of stuff. So, so, so I am struggling with the adequacy of it. Um, but, but this is, this is you know, the, a public hearing. It's still open. Do we have questions of the applicants specifically? And then I want to, you know, ask if there's any more public comment tonight. No? 
questions so, for them or questions yeah, well, for them? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, they, they're, the they can answer questions for themselves. Just, I guess I could just ask a question. Um, so I know you all have different trucking operations, different a number of trucks. Correct. Right, yeah. for your, so I forgot what that number was. So how many trucks go in and out? Every day? Yeah, so like all, how, all of them do. Okay, and how much, how much is all? I have one. One. Uh, five. Six. Eleven. Okay, seventeen trucks. So they they do they do leave in, leave in the morning because. And that's all trucks. Yeah. So, so yeah. right, I understand. They leave and then they come back and they're done. They yeah. they come back come back uh, be, before before lunch before noon and so then then they just stay. Nobody leaves unless you you know maybe one or two three maybe has to leave to get a fuel or something or. No, I understand. Drop it off to all fuel, but not but like they go in and out in and out every day. I understand. Day. No, I understand. In. Out, uh, done. And that's it. Right, I got it. So, um, but the, so you, all 17 trucks are used yes. daily. Okay. And then if, if I, my, uh, can I, Mr. Silver, uh, he said, uh, well, from what I understand, he will, if you need a plan or something, I'm sure he will have a plan. But again, Peter spoke with him. I don't know exactly what they spoke about. He said he's willing to do those things. But he wasn't told, and I wasn't told again in the beginning before if he requires a plan. But I'm sure they, 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 when they spoke with Peter, they discussed what's needed, what's not needed. I don't know, I don't know. Peter maybe can explain better. But I'm sure he's going to have a plan if you guys require that. But I can't act on something in which a plan has not been submitted. And, uh, and you, you can ask Peter again why, why he's not here, because I'm sure he explained it to him. That's what we gave you two weeks for. And said, so, "Can you do it in two weeks?" And the answer was yes. So well, we continue this uh, matter. He, he, he was just calling me, calling me right now. <laughs> Peter, you were going to say something. What was the? Did you? Uh, I thought you were ready to respond to one of their questions. Well, they. I can't speak for why Mr. Tartaglia uh, isn't here tonight. I did uh, indicate to him that um, it would be helpful for him to be in attendance. Uh, uh, in, as in the past, he has shied away from appearing in front of this commission. I don't know if that, I, I won't assume anything, but nevertheless, we did discuss whether he needed to be here or not. So uh, that was his, um, his decision. Okay. Did he make, and, and I already asked you this question, he didn't, he didn't say he was going to submit a plan. He, it must have been part of your dialogue. It was part of the dialogue uh, when we got to the point that he was not prepared to pave uh, you know the parking lot there was no need for a plan what is the plan going to show uh, you know there's nothing to show there so uh, uh, that that part of the conversation uh, ended pretty quickly so uh, we did talk about uh, uh, the other two things that he was agreeable to but uh, he didn't feel he needed to provide a plan to show the extended driveway I guess well, the uh, point of a plan is accountability so as soon as you submit a plan you're accountable to abide by it so I can understand that being a motive for not wanting to submit one. Tom? Uh, Mr. Chairman, you indicated if there were any questions uh, for these, uh, uh, any of these three applicants. Uh, I do have uh, one. Uh, with regards to the trucks that come onto the property and go off the property, are they filled with items, with merchandise or anything during the time they're there? They're all empty, coming in and leaving. Yeah. Yeah. So would it be fair to say in sort of the vernacular language that the primary f uh, you know, business function that you have on the property is uh, the, the, the parking, the storage of the vehicles themselves? Is that your primary function well, on the property? Yes or no, but we also have, uh, we also have uh, uh, offices space over there. And we don't require to have uh, uh, how you say a storage facility because there's really no loading dock over there in the facility. It's all, it's all even with the ground, so we can't even <laughs> unload and load, and which we don't require because we will leave, load somewhere else, and deliver the merchandise. So, but major thing is we live here and it's close to us, and we park because there's really nowhere in where else where else uh, you can park. But obviously, yes, we do ha need office to do our office space. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, office and business and so on. So you have really two functions there. One is the uh, the operation of your business, you know, office. the office functions yeah. of the operations of your and, business there. And right, and and also the the uh, the parking of the vehicles, the overnight parking of the vehicles themselves. Correct. Okay. Shall we open it up to the public? Uh, is there anybody who'd? Oh. 
bear with us just a moment. Tony? You have 17 trucks total between the three of you? Yes, yeah, 17. 17. And you've had uh, parking there for over 10 years? I have been 10 years. They've been a little bit more than seven. Be less, yeah. Seven, yeah. And each one of you have offices located there? Yeah. Yes, Correct. Sir. With computers, tables, yes, desks, chairs? Yes, so you sir. you pay property tax on all those? Yes, sir. What are the trucks worth? So the United States Post Office, so it's like around like Connecticut. <coughs> what are they worth? $5,000 each or $20,000 each? Oh, depends. But the, well, it depends what you find. You know, whatever we find on the market. But yeah, around 2015. Some Why are you in Wethersfield? Why aren't you in Berlin? Because we live in Wethersfield. But Newington has a variety of different industrial zones that allow this type of, of, of Why if we have something nearby where we live, in a, near our house? Just, just because it's here. Is your lease long term or short term? Long, long term. So do you have an expiration date when the lease expires with Mr. Tartaglia? Uh, I didn't notice it, but I, I don't have a lease with me, but yeah, something like we have it. Yeah. Okay. So it's another five years, ten years, or two months? Uh, I, I, I can't, I, I, didn't, I didn't notice it. It's yeah, been, it's been, it's been a while when they signed one, so. Would the rental rate be cheaper in Berlin or in Newington? We didn't really you look. You haven't researched? No. You don't, you don't look good. So thank you, gentlemen. If you could just step back and we'll have some comment. I saw one hand up already. Thanks. Thank you. <coughs> please. Yes, please. Greatest grandpa. That's exactly why you did it. Ask my four-year-old grandson. Great job, man. All right. My name is Mike Aparo, A-P-A-R-O, and I live at the... Um, uh, the crossings, which are neighbors of these people here. And I have to tell you the truth. I don't live on Tinsmith Crossing. I live down the street on Schoolhouse, just right around the corner. And I myself, personally, have never been bothered by the uh, coming and going of the trucks. Perhaps neighbors on Tinsmith, and if there are any here, they can speak for themselves. They might be bothered, but I am not. So I, I want to say that up front. Uh, I seem to remember I was at the hearing when Mr. Tartaglia did not show up again and he has sent one of his tenants, as maybe some of you remember. And uh, this, uh, you know, I hope it's not developing into a pattern. But uh, one remark was made about not being able to plant trees because of rocky ground. Well, the fact is that he cut down a lot of trees, okay? And uh, they've never been replaced. And, uh, and his, uh, to my knowledge, they're not being used for parking space either, okay? Supposedly that was the original idea of cutting them down in the first place. So th that particular argument really falls flat on its face, okay? The man has not submitted a, 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 a plan, and I don't think he can afford to, and I really don't think that this, uh, uh, that this uh, uh, proposal should be approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, please join us. I am Christiane Colgan, and I live on Tinsmith Crossing at 14 Tinsmith. So I can, it's not my backyard, uh, this, the, the, the trucks going in and out, but I can see them clearly. And I will tell you, I do see them. I see movement of trucks at 2 o'clock in the morning, and it's not just on one occasion. It's on more than one occasion. So I, that's just the fact of the matter. And I would also echo that there were trees there before that were all cut down. So what the current situation is, the fact they cannot grow trees, I'm not sure why not, but I will tell you there were beautiful trees there before that are gone. Do you hear but, any noise there when the trucks are in at 2 o'clock? Are they diesel engines? Or I'm do sorry? You, do you hear any noise from these trucks? I see them. I, see I'm them. aware of their trucks. Yes, I hear the noises, and I see the lights. Lights come I see the lights as they back in, as they pull in, and then they back into their respective spaces. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Sure. My name is Naomi Morales and it's spelled N-O-E-M-I. And uh, I live in uh, Tanner Crossing, and um, I noticed that I've been there 20 years, and the owner of that building has tried all kinds of tricks to have 
told um, told um, old old. Um, that's the reason he cut down the trees was because he wanted to bring um, cars that are wrecked and park them there. But then um, the condo association, um, I guess, made a complaint, and then he uh, backed off, and, and now the trees are all gone. Also, um, there's a big tractor trailer that keeps was coming onto um, Russell Road, and I, I work, and when I come home around 2.30, that truck would be right in the corner of Russell Road and Arrow Road, and there's only two lanes, so I would have to go around that tractor trailer. So there's a lot of things going on in that building that he allows, and um, those trucks have been there maybe two years the most, those 17 truck um, trucks, and um, they, they are, they're destroying the road. If, if you go down to Russell Road, you'll notice that as the trucks are turning, you'll see all the asphalt is falling apart near the estate property. So, I mean, it's just a lot of things going on, and I really believe that the owner of that building is just irresponsible. And maybe he doesn't even have the funds um, to take care of the building, and that's why he's just accepting whoever wants to come and lease. He's just accepting, you know, people in there just to make the money to keep the place. But I just thought I'd say that. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Please. Hi, good evening. My name is Lisa Beatty, and that's spelled B-E-A-T-Y. I am also on Tanner Crossing, in the crossings down at the bottom of the hill. I do not have a direct line of sight to the vehicles. Although I do go in and out to work full time, and there are man, many, many occasions when I am going up, go up Tinsmith, turn on to Russell to head down towards Arrow or down towards the Humane Society, and the trucks are in the process of going across the road, not necessarily taking into account that there is traffic coming up the road. There's, there's an issue there with the trucks not yielding to the traffic on the road. Um, also, I, I don't think that they should be allowed to pursue this without the property being developed according to a site plan. It is an eyesore. It is an eyesore. And our property backs right up against it. It affects our property values. And if a home were going to be built on that property, there would be certain requirements for that. I know that it is not a residential area, but they still should not be allowed to develop a parking area where there is inadequate pavement, probably inadequate drainage, which is causing all of the issues in the parking lot. It's affecting the quality of the road that we all have to drive down to go in and out of our complex. And I, I just do not feel that it is a, a appropriate place for that type of a parking facility. Um, I have heard trucks going in and out. I have heard trucks on the weekends going in and out. And I understand that um, they would want to have some place to park. I do not believe that just because it is up on one of the back roads of Weathersfield that that is the place for it. There are a lot of property owners there. I think we have over 172 units or 172 units in our, in our complex. And every one of, our, of our, our properties is affected by the site of that property and the traffic impact. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. My name is Nella DeBose. I live at 9 Tinsmith Crossing. And I just have a couple questions of the applicants. Um, you mentioned that um, the sign said they're coming and going in the middle of the night, and that so, they're not. They're so, leaving. So would you address the comments to us, and then oh, we'll I'm turn sorry. around? No problem. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll ask them the question for you, kind of. Okay. 
um, they mentioned that the sign said that um, they come and go in the middle of the night. And he corrected us and said that they leave in the morning and they're back by noon. What time does he consider the morning? What time do the trucks leave in the morning? He, uh, so I, I think last time around he was describing like it 2 as in and and 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, right? which is I'm sure at, what was meant when the sign said right. middle of the night. Af after midnight and back before, no back right. before noon. Okay. Um, there are some trucks in that lot, and I don't know if they're yours, but when they back up, they make that loud beeping noise. Is that yeah. your trucks, or is that some of the others? Okay. okay. It is that loud beeping noise. Okay. I'm, I'm sure it is. That's part of the noise issue, because especially when everything else is quiet, and you just hear that, you know, beep, beep, beep. Right. Um, do you own the budget trucks, or, or do you just... Yes, yes. Those are rental trucks? Yes, yes, they do. <laughs> they, <laughs> oh, so the budget trucks are your trucks. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, because those haven't been there for 10 years. No, well, we've been there for 10 years, but not all. Yeah, because I'm, I'm I'm an original owner. Excuse, excuse, excuse okay. me. It gets really tough to put it on a record. That's why it's kind of important. If you ask us the questions, we'll either. Oh, I'm sorry. It gets well, that on the record. It gets on the record that way. That's all. Oh, it doesn't need to be. <laughs> that's all. Really, there were just some questions. So I appreciate it. Thank so, you. so yeah, they they explained last time that they had these rental vehicles that they used as part of their fleet as well, and I it was part of their know, 17. I didn't know if those were already located there, and they just... So, so I think they use them on occasion when the workload requires that they need an extra truck, or if their own vehicle is out being serviced and they need to make a delivery, they will rent a vehicle for the, you know, for a period of time. So while their own, own personally owned vehicles are perhaps out of commission, they sometimes rent, or they rent when they need additional but those fleet. I guess that's why I'm confused because there, the budget trucks are there all the time. So I, so when they say they rent them, I a, thought that's a business model, right? I mean, they rent their vehicles and use them to okay. in, as part of their operation, right? Thank Whether you. they own them or not. Right? Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so so let us get through everybody first. If there's anybody else who would like to speak, come on up. Evening, uh, Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walker Hill Road. I have more of a question. Um, is it the property owner that is to uh, obtain the special permit, or is it the business owner? It is, actu it is actually the business owner. <clears throat> so this is not unique in terms of a tenant being the one that's in front of us. But it always comes up that you know whatever may be required of that tenant, the property owner needs to do something in order to make it plausible for that tenant to be there. Okay, so just an observer, these guys just trying to operate our business, and they went to Mr. Tartaglia and said, can we lease some space from you? Sure, go ahead. And now they're stuck with the burden of obtaining the permit, and uh, that's an unfortunate situation. But uh, as a business owner, who, who, who advises the business owner to... You know, hey, you got to have a permit before you sign a lease. That's, that's kind of so why I was that, asking that's the, term, the term of the lease and, and the commitment that was made between the landlord and the tenant. That's yeah, that question. that that's part of the burden on the part of you know the the you know the business owner slash tenant to do his due diligence before starting business operations to find out what the applicable rules and regulations for the occupancy of that space is going to be before he initiates the business that yeah. that's his legal so, requirement so the, so the answer is the answer is available all they had to do is go see peter okay but, um, thank you yeah thanks is there anybody else or should we go on to seconds is something new a new topic to throw at us come on up grandpa <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa world's greatest <laughs> <laughs> come on up world's greatest grandpa <laughs> how dare you relegate him down <laughs> <laughs> There's only, one. There's only one. Anyway, I was, um, I don't have to introduce myself again, I take it. 
I was apprised by a, 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 another um, resident who doesn't want to come up here and speak in his own behalf. But a, a question is, is raised basically about what kind of maintenance do these trucks receive and where? And uh, do we have some kind of an environmental issue also going on there with oil changes and who knows oil leakages and, and stuff that, you know, per, perhaps from trucks that are not properly maintained? So we just yeah. want to raise that. Very good. Thank you. I think it was answered last time, but yeah, the, you know maybe the applicant can come back and <clears throat> if, if there's no additional comments at the moment, at the moment, could the applicant come back up and and why don't you start? You you did answer that last time, but would you? Well, that last time we got a maintenance. Yes, so maintenance is not being done there. We do it uh, in a in a garage, Middletown, East Hartford, it's whatever. The, no oil leak. Yes, uh, oil leakages. There is no oil education. If, if there was, of course, we could be cited by DOT or so we can be fined. We don't need that. At the, at the same time, the owner, he notices something, he can throw us out. So we do have to maintain our trucks in a good condition because they have to be on the road every day. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Besides uh, fumes that, the, uh, let's say, diesel engines give away, it's the same thing as we all live next to Burlington Pike. There's tons of trucks and cars passing by all, all the time when we still smell it. So. So it's it, so. it's a part of nature or life. We, we can't get away from that. And you know, unless unless you're gonna go move up to New Hampshire, or Vermont, somewhere in the woods, you know. So so did I summarize your um, rental vehicle operation correctly? That you it, use it's it a as rental. part of we your don't know. business plan. Right? Bu budget is yes. They are rental when we require something center base. Yes, yeah. but yes, there are few of them there because it's a rental. And then if we requ require more trucks, we rent one. Right. But uh, but the truck. Uh, Quantity sometimes go up, sometimes go down, but it, right. it now went up by 20, I believe. Uh, yeah, I think we talked about uh, maybe an upset limit of 20, you know, that at least that's, that's what was together. going through my mind last time we were here. It's like if we if we go down this path and we approve something, it's probably an upward limit of 20-ish vehicles. It was going you through can, my yeah, mind. Yeah, you anyways. go through it. I'm not going to. So you must no. have said that or somewhere along the way. Right. Okay. But then uh, regarding, uh, let's say, uh, one lady mentioned regarding the Russell Road road being damaged, uh, from I've been living there also for about 10 years at the crossings, and uh, the Russell Road has, I don't believe it has been ever paid even, well, it, it's, it's a good road, I don't complain. Yes, there is a little damage when you come out of the truck, but that's when the truck to trailers were parked, which I have a picture over here, there's a lot of truck to trailers, but that's an old picture about two years ago. And yes, I don't know if you guys see it, but yeah, you can see some short trailers. There's only right now only one trailer, the red one that had got the permission from the town, and he owes the one of the units, the, the sport yeah, car. The sport like car, said, one yes. But that's an old picture. Uh, then back then we had only few uh, trucks, so he said no more trailers because yes, they did made, made noise, and they did also leave in the morning, and they make even more noise than regular trucks. We don't back up in the morning, two o'clock, three o'clock. We leave in the morning, so you start the truck up. A minute or two, you warm it up, especially when it's summer right now. You don't have to warm it up. You you, you leave in the city, and nobody floors out of it. You, you might leave li hear a little bit of gravel, the noise of the trucks hitting the little bumps and all that, but nobody backs up 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. They usually come in around 7-ish, uh, 8. Some of them could be 6. I, I don't talk, I, I speak for both men. Like, I have one and truck, and they have a little bit more than me. But uh, the road itself is pretty good condition. There's really nothing wrong except where, where you pull out from the driver. Yes, there's a little little pothole. That's what the truck truck to trailers did. So the only thing is required there is just to add little gravel and it's gonna be fixed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just my concern again. It's, it's saying what it is. But uh, regarding the trees, to answer what he, from what my knowledge, what the trees he cut down, which is over here, crossings over here, trees over here. He cut down, from what I understand, he tried to build, I guess, additional garages. Yes, someone was correct about it. But uh, economy going down in Connecticut, financial said no. He said nothing. But again, it's growing right now to plant trees there right now. Okay, if he's going to plant a tree there, what's he going to plant? That? A 10-foot tree? It's going to take another 20 years for it to grow. You cannot plant a 30-foot tree over there again. So. All right. So, so final questions. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Peter just to kind of remind us the history of the permits um, and, the, and the last one, when that was, which had this big site plan. And I think that's why they cut the trees down, right? They had the site plan and they were extending the... I thought it was all in prep that they just never finished. But go ahead. You, you, sure. 
remind us. Just yeah, just to, just to summarize, we've had a lot of information thrown around. Just and, and some of you were on the commission, some of you were not on the commissions. But just a, a quick history, and I'll try and go through this uh, relatively quickly, just to sort of lay the groundwork as to how we got here today. But um, and, and just to clarify some things, Mr. Tar Taglia is claiming that I don't think are accurate. So. Uh, just for the sake of, of the record. So uh, the site was originally used for Aero Tool. Uh, it was given a certificate of occupancy in 1966 for office and for manufacturing. Aero Tool was a tool company. They did manufacturing. Um, fast forward to August of 2004. Uh, 61 Arrow Road LLC, which Mr. Tartaglia was the manager of, so he made some claims that he didn't know about the parking and he do, he's no, not responsible for it, but just for the record, 61 Arrow Road was uh, John Tartaglia. He submitted an application, which was 1435.04. Uh, he proposed to renovate the building for phase one. The phase one was for the, in, uh, the industrial part of the building, the, the 12 tenant bays, that was 25,000 square feet. He called it a multi-tenant flex space. So there were 12 bays that were permitted to be occupied. He did submit a site plan. The site plan specifically said that he was going to pave the parking lot. There were 55 parking spaces. There was drainage. There was a lot of discussion at the planning and zoning meetings about the parking and whether those were, uh, whether that parking was going to be adequate. Uh, also at that time, he did submit uh, an existing condition survey, which is in your file. That survey shows a much more limited parking area than presently exists today. So since that time, he has expanded his parking area uh, and has not paved it per your requirements. So <coughs> just for the record as to, as to that particular claim, that back parking lot was, uh, was not in the condition that it was in today. It was much uh, less intensive. In September of 2004, you did approve that plan, that site plan. Um, September 29th, 2004, Mr. Tartaglia's company, 61 Arrow Road, <coughs> excuse me, 61 Arrow Road purchased the property. They didn't own it at that time, but they came in and purchased it after that. In 2005, in October, once again, 61 Arrow Road LLC, Mr. Tartaglia was their agent, uh, submitted phase two, which was for the office building, which was application 149705. Once again, he submitted a site plan. Uh, the site plan was for the office space. There was there's 16,500 square feet of office space in that building, which required 66 additional parking spaces. So there was a plan at that point for 94 parking spaces. Once again, the entire parking lot was to be paved. There was a, a series of lighting plans and there was a screening plan, uh, none of which ever was built. Uh, in January of 2006, this commission did approve that plan. And once again, there was a whole bunch of discussion about parking and paving and what was happening and what was not happening. But parking and paving was a big, big issue at that time. Um, in April, on April 13th of 2007, I sent Mr. Tartaglia an email reminding him that he hasn't finished the parking lot uh, and that has to be paved. So once again, for him to say that he didn't know he had to pave anything is completely uh, inaccurate. In December of 2007, 61 Arrow Road LLC, once again, care of Mr. Tartaglia, submitted an application for phase three, which was another building, uh, which I think you were referring to. That was a cold storage building. It was a special permit. There was a public hearing. Uh, he specifically stated on his application that the parking would also serve the existing building. Uh, there was a whole revised parking plan proposed, and once again, that was to be paved. Uh, once again, that was in December of 2007. In March of 2008, uh, the commission approved that particular site plan. We did, this commission did give, give him three different extensions for that approval, which would have taken the approval up to 2011, but that uh, permit expired. He did not, did not review it, uh, renew it after that point in time. Um, in May of 2013, the building department issued a temporary certificate of occupancy to the industrial space with the caveat that he still needed planning department and the engineering department's approval. I'm not sure why they did that, but nevertheless, the planning department and the engineering department did not sign off on that. In April of 2014, the zoning officer issued a, an order. Uh, there were tractor trailers, there were boats being stored there, so there was a notice of violation issued. In um, March of 2015, 
Uh, PR Aero Road LLC acquired the property. As far as I know, Mr. Tartaglia is also the agent for that uh, group. But it went through, I think, a, a tax foreclosure process. He ended up acquiring the property again. And then most recently, and the most recent thing uh, to bring to your attention was in November of 2015, the zoning officer, Justin LaFountain, issued an, an order regarding the present truck and freight operations without approval. So there was a claim that uh, for seven or ten years there were a bunch of trucks there uh, as far as I'm aware and as far as our zoning officer is aware uh, this whole issue with the significant number of trucks really started in November of 2015 so um, so in summary uh, clearly there's a record here of us approving plans for paved parking lots and, and none of that work being done clearly the parking lot was expanded over the years to the condition that exists today without paving it and without doing the things we would expect of any other uh, applicant so uh, i think it's important that that summary uh, is uh, provided to you so you know exactly uh, how we got got to this point today so um and you uh you guys weren't aware of that, right? Uh, what he just said, uh, I heard some of it, but that's, uh, I, that, that's the, that's parking, the, whatever was supposed to be done, no. Right. That's not, I'm not exactly, the owner. Yeah. So, I mean, there's there's all of this, and then... The, the only thing I just know, it's the, the bill... Pers the person that we've been corresponding with, the commission at least, because it's relatively... Yeah, the only thing I just know from what he told me is, uh, again, the building been there since 65 or so, and it, the parking lot was in the same condition the way it was. It was never paved and I guess it does that, not that's require. The, that's, yeah, the, were, that's the only thing I know. You were unfortunately kept in the dark. But well, again. Process, and then all of a sudden it's like, it seems sudden, but it's a 13 year old argument that we've been having. So, right. the, you know, the ball was just kicked along and along and along by Mr. Tartagli. We, we let him, you know, we tried to work with him with every one of those approvals. We, he would catch up, he would finally do the parking lot and here we are today. So, you know, shame on us for agreeing to let him do that, but nevertheless, that's the situation that, that happened over those years, so. All right. Tom. Uh, just one thing to confirm. It's my understanding that uh, the, the latest conveyance of the property would have been by quick claim deed. And quick claim deed, the person acquiring or the entity acquiring the property takes the property subject to all other prior encumbrances that affect that property. So I, I believe you're right. Yeah. All right, so this is still a public hearing. Uh, it's still open. Uh, any additional questions for the applicant? Everybody feel like they've got enough information to, to, make, a, to make a motion, you know, to close the hearing? I so move. All right. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, thank you. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. So, um, you know, his, historically, we've always tried to make positive motions to see if a positive motion would pass. Um, and as I said, you need to consider the special permit criteria um, in that whole process. So. You know, w would somebody take a shot at crafting a positive motion for us to take an action on? Is that a? <laughs> I, 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 yes, I always I always do. advise you to, okay. to make a motion to approve can, can subject to conditions. Something? Right. Right. So. There's just there's so many conditions that we would we can we make it a general. I, I think we, we can make a simple motion. I'll yeah, make, I think I'll make that motion too. Simple okay. motion is to say <coughs> approved as submitted. Yeah, to approve application 1946-17Z for Andre Marquez for, for a special permit in accordance to 5-2-H5 for the principal use of trucking and freight operations uh, at 61 Arrow Road. For purposes of uh, discussion, I'll second the motion. All right. Thank you. All right, so, you know, we can all offer our thoughts, you know, but in terms of the special permit criteria that this has, you know, I, I honestly don't have, you know, the residential area, I, I recognize that I have, they have concerns about the type of operation, but the use of this facility, in my opinion, for what has been described, which is essentially a parking lot for trucks, to me, 
um, is not comp not all that problematic. It, I, I wouldn't have a problem finding this to be a suitable location, and I'm going to go down the list here, or um, or incompatible with with the neighborhood. In fact, the the homes are the uh, are the odd usage in the area in general. There's lots of other commercial uh, operations going on, and, and the motels and, and such in the in the general neighborhood. So, I, I don't find parking, and we've approved these type of uses in the past for this property. So, and and I was part of that. So I'm not personally uh, all that opposed to it, but. We always attach conditions, and that's what I'm struggling with. In terms, of, uh, in terms of this site having suitable access and parking, it doesn't. It never has. That's why we've always put conditions into it, and that's item 8.4, and, and appropriate structures and landscaping. That's item 8.3. There is no plan to work from. There is no promise by the applicant to make this happen uh, with this proposal, and, and, and all the other ones become moot. I just, it, it's not adequate for me to support the motion to approve right yeah i mean i, I agree that the the use that is that the property has now like i'm okay with it like as a storage place for vehicles but the whole point of all of the rules and stipulations and requirements that we would have on a site like this is to make it more compatible with the neighboring community so and without any attempt at following any of those requests, or not requests, they're more demands, then you kind of can't move forward. So if another applicant comes and decides to do the exact same thing and follow all of our, and apply a site plan or apply with a site plan, it's, that's totally fine. Like I don't, I don't have an issue with that. The, the issue is the, I assume depending on what the breadth of that site plan would be, right? Yeah, I mean, as long as it's, yeah. but it starts. It, it would with, have it to be approved, and it would have to be. You know, it, to, it starts with a site plan. Probably go back and forth, but the the general use of the area, I don't, I don't have an issue with. It's just that you can't possibly approve something that doesn't exist, really. I object to the approval of this application, as I said previously, for the reason that it doesn't meet the basic tenets of our zoning regulations, uh, that the parking lot has to be totally paved and totally screened. Um, and once a plan was, is submitted, which, would show, which could show um, that it's screened, adequately screened, and that it's totally paved, uh, then we can, I could sit down and apply the special use permit uh, requirements but uh, given the history uh, the fact that two uh, site plans uh, were approved and agreed to by uh, the owners of the property which included uh, completely paving the parking lot uh, I think that this this application doesn't come close uh, to meeting our requirements and this individual should not be rewarded for f uh, for ignoring uh, the dictates of the of prior prior site plans and being in violation of our zoning regulations. I have a question, just a general question, in terms of the uh, current tenants. If this application goes the way it's looking, um, what are the what, what can be done to make sure that? they're given maybe a chance to find a new location like because it's not their fault right it's not their fault so we're trying not to punish the wrong people so there is a um, follow-up hearing uh, there's a contempt of court hearing in ju early July where the previous actions are going to be followed up on with the same judge um, I'm assuming at that point in time uh, the judges will be apprised of whatever the outcome of this situation is, and potentially it'll be disposed of uh, as part of that uh, action. Um, if not, um, uh, you know, they can work with our zoning officer. I'm sure he will give them a certain amount of time, obviously not uh, unlimited and, you know, not lengthy uh, uh, for them to um, find a new home or, or, or maybe some other changes uh, on the, or on the horizon, which I'm not thinking would, would happen. But um, so, yeah, we'll, uh, you know, the, the zoning officer is not an unreasonable person, and I'm sure we'll work uh, with them to 
as long as they're working to find another home. So assuming your decision goes that way. Just mm -hmm. yep. if it goes that way, yeah, I'm so just curious what the yep. mood of the town would be. Yep. Other thoughts? We, we do have a motion in a second. But I'm, I'm going to reference again PR Arrow LLC's letter dated June 20th, 2017 in paragraph 9 stating that uh, this corporation out of Ridgefield, Connecticut acquired the property on a tax auction in 2014 and uh, the variety of correspondence we've had since I've sat on this board and participated <coughs> on a variety of applications over the last decade um, clearly are uh, the applicants in the past and this new corporation is being negligent. Um, I'm not sure why reference is made on the historic facts going back to 2004, having served on the 10-year master plan of conservation and development and, and sat through these applications, Peter. Um, the historic nature of this is irrelevant. The facts are the facts. The use is the use. As Dan said, uh, it is what it is. And you've referenced these sections eight of our articles um, as being relevant, as being very relevant to, to the use of this facility, and it's pretty cut and dry. I ask the questions to the uh, to the tenants because I am sensitive to their needs and wants. There's 17 trucks yielding anywhere from 500 a year to probably $2,000 a year per truck in property taxes, and it is a revenue produ producer without distraction. But it, it's second to the fact that that we can't approve this uh, as is. So I'm going to be voting against it. So if I could maybe just jump in here for the record. As I'm listening to you, you mentioned the special permit criteria. Uh, you went through those criteria uh, specifically. And as, as I listen to your comments, um, special permit criteria uh, at least 8.3, 8 which has to deal with landscaping and screening and buffering, 8.4, which deals with suitable access and, and the parking lot conditions. Uh, and 8.6, which is public utilities, specifically uh, stormwater management. Uh, clearly, uh, as far as the commission members are, are concerned, uh, are the uh, specific criteria uh, that would not allow you to approve this application at, at the time. Now, let me just say, that none of those criteria are met by the testimony that has come forth in this application. Agreed. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we have a, a positive motion uh, and it's been seconded. Those in favor, please identify themselves. Right. Those in opposition to that motion to approve? And it's everybody? Seven, seven in opposition to the motion to approve. Okay, so it doesn't pass. Right. All right. So Good we, luck to you, we, gentlemen. We, yeah, we. we that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Moving on to, let's see, I think we're going to item 3.3, .3, a public hearing for application 1950. A very good year, by the way. 1950-17-Z, the ministries. Tempo de Casica. Um, would the applicant join us? This is for a special permit concerning a change of use for a place of worship at 48 Silestine Highway. Mm -hmm. no. <clears throat> I'm Carl Lucas, owner of the property at 48 Silestine. Property is just north of the 5 and 15 overpass and Formerly uh, used for the Boston Bartender School. He was there about 13 years or so. And <clears throat> Mr. and Ms. Rosas have uh, desired to open a church. I did go to our neighbors, <clears throat> and I have a letter signed for um, support. The um, <clears throat> Boston, I'm sorry, the Ukrainian Federal Credit Union, Hartford Safe and Lock, and a few of our tenants. Who should I give so these to? You just pass them to the first person, we'll grab them and <coughs> roll them on down. Thank you. Thank you. 
So, so as I understand the application, you're gonna you're going to take the floor, one floor of the building, and you're going to reconfigure it into a what looks like an open hall type of situation. Okay. Yes, my name is Iris Rojas. Um, me and my husband, we are the pastors of Harvest Time Ministry. Um, we are a bilingual church. Um, we've been in operation for three and a half years, almost four. Um, we're currently looking to move to the southern area um, because half of our members, this is where they live. They live in the borderline of Wethersfield and Hartford. Most of them do business in Wethersfield. They shop out of the Wethersfield borderline. And we have some people that don't want to go we, where we are right now. So we decided to look for a place where um, better suits the people that we serve. Uh, we, we operate in small groups during the week, and we mostly will use the, the space on Sundays where we will gather about 30 to 35 people at the most right now. Um, I know there is um, Spanish in the town, most of them, most of them, uh, some time ago, they used to go to Hartford to the churches, but because of overcrowding and the way the town is, a lot of people don't want to travel that far out. Uh, right now, we're in the North End, and like I say, many people say, you know, we don't want to go over there. And most of our people, half of them are in the south of Hartford, and the other ones are in the other towns. All right, thank you. Uh, your hours of operation, it looks like you're planning it's a, it's a worship on a Sunday afternoon. Yes. And uh, evenings, potentially, mm -hmm. right? Uh, seven to nine. So how does, that, uh, how does that work compared to the other uses in the building? Because 29 parking, I think it's 29 parking spaces, some maybe not even on the property, you know. But I guess I'd like to, I'd like to hear that everybody that's coming to your church is not there at the same time the other uses are are in play yeah we have right now about 10 cars 15 at the most um we most of us carpool we bring other people um, in our cars um and the timing um, um it doesn't interact with the other tenant that's in the property so in the evenings, they're not there when we are. And then on Sundays, um, at the time we go in the afternoon, they're not there either. So we don't think there's gonna be any problem with parking. Thank you. And I, and I knew I'd heard or read this issue. So Peter uh, provided us with a document that uh, does a quick analysis of the parking and it's his opinion that this shouldn't be an issue as well. You should have also received a listing of the tenants in the building. I don't know if you saw that, but if you tally up uh, the businesses and then how many employees they have, I mean, it doesn't obviously speak to people who are customers, but uh, in terms of the entire building, there are a total of seven employees and some of them are not there uh, every day. So uh, factoring that in as well, I think um, there should be adequate um, parking for, for everybody. I might add, Thank if you. you go by any given day, you'll see three or four cars. So. Around the building? Yeah. All right, thank you. Is it, any questions? Is it just the jujitsu school above? Is it just the jujitsu school on the second floor there? Or are there other tenants? The, the tenant, our tenant, is the uh, dance studio, Limelight Dance Studio. Oh, okay. Oh, so they use, sorry. I, I do jujitsu, so I know that there's a school there, but I've never been there. So it's a dance studio that's that's up on the second floor, mm -hmm. and, they, and they use it for classes here and there. Matter of fact, there's been a dance studio there, different owners, but over 30 years. Okay. Yeah. Matter of fact, Alice Corella was studying there too. The only question I have is on the parking, and I'm not sure what to do. I welcome the application. Um, is a question of the ownership of that uh, the parking area and whether or not until that is straightened out we have a right to approve something um, 
because we could approve it and the railroad could come in and say, hey, I want my property back. You can't park there. Um, I don't know good. who owns that property. Very good point. <clears throat> yes, the railroad does own some of the paved property. When we bought it, the pavement, well, to the east behind the building and the pavement to the south was all there. Then we just, because it was wide open, we parked there. Matter of fact, the, uh, when you mentioned the state of Connecticut as well, part of their property is, was paved. And some brought up to me, actually uh, being paved, we're saving them money on mowing. <laughs> nice try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, I don't know how exactly uh, to, to answer your concern. I, I, you know, I had the same sort of reservation, but then I, you know, and, and maybe uh, Ryan could uh, agree or, di or disagree with what I'm thinking. Even if someone kicked them off, even if they kicked them off, I think you can get 20 spots on the site. <laughs> And so I'm comforted by the idea that the state of Connecticut, the DOT, if they should come through and say, get off my property, what's more likely is they'll say, start paying me. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. and, the railroad, too. And, and, and the railroad, too. So, my, experience, my experience with the railroad is that's what they do. Yeah. Okay. So I'm less concerned about you losing the spots, but even if you did, you'd probably still be able to get 20 as I look at, this, at it. So. Mm -hmm. That's, that's how I'm comforted by it. I, I think I could find my way to, to say yes to it on that issue. Other questions of the applicant? This is a public hearing. I will be asking the public. Peter, we're basically here because this is a general business zone and religious institutions are- Require a special permit. special permit. Correct. Okay. So when you say um, like 30 to 35 people on your on your Sundays, some families all coming in one car? Or yes, so yeah. That's um, kind of what I was assuming. Everybody has to pick somebody else up. Uh, so while we usually carry seven people in our car. And okay. So, <laughs> so that's, um, yeah. That furthers the point of you know, counting 30 mm -hmm. people. We're not talking about 30 cars. We're talking yeah. about at least half that. Yes. Yeah. Anybody in the public who wishes to comment on this application? Okay. Then, like I said, it is a public hearing. Any additional questions for the applicant? And if not, is there a motion on the hearing? Motion, motion to close. Second. <laughs> you know, you get the second. <laughs> gotcha. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Discussion, dialogue, motion. Anybody? I'll make a motion to approve application 1950-17-Z, uh, place of worship at 48 Silestine Highway, Ministries, Tiempo de Cosecha. Yes. Close enough, right? Um, Peter, were there any conditions? I didn't see anything here, right? Uh, the only, uh, as, and we raised the issue as well about the parking to the applicant, met with him late last week. I mean, there is a process that they can pursue to uh, either get a license or a permit or whatever the DOT and the railroad call it. Uh, it is done up and down the Silas Teen Highway uh, on a regular basis. I don't know if you want to complicate this by throwing that in as a condition and then having that, you know, reviewed down the road. There was a historical site plan approved, which uh, I don't th think had as many parking spaces as exist today, but it had a pretty close number of parking spaces. So if they couldn't get those uh, licenses, there would still be adequate parking. So that's my only uh, thought, and I, you, you, it's up to you as to if you want to, I mean, it will complicate things if you attach it and they don't, you know, comply yeah. with it. But I think the record should uh, clearly reflect that the uh, property owner, not necessarily the applicant, uh, reach out to both of those entities and attempt to resolve um, that matter so that it doesn't come back on you as a commission for having consented to it and known about it without uh, at least um, having a, a direction provided to the applicant. If, if, if they did not give them approval, uh, which I'm not saying they wouldn't, uh, the parking would have to be revised a little bit. The hand, there's a handicapped spot behind the building, which would be a conflict, and, and some other things might have to change. So it wouldn't be the end of the world, uh, and it shouldn't uh, prohibit this particular tenant from going in there, but I just, uh, from a not necessarily a legal point of view, but procedural point of view. Um, 
and, and plus they probably uh, couldn't go to those entities until after you approved it anyway because they would right, want to see the town having approved it first so so the process is probably okay but maybe the record should just clearly reflect that you advise that they they pursue that particularly if this owner ever wants to sell the property these issues are going to be flagged and may help hold up a, a, p a potential transaction so they should maybe spend some time trying to resolve it now All right. so I, I tend to agree and so you've, you've stated it very well so everybody agree with that yeah. right yeah, okay I mean, the motivation is on their part mostly because right. there's no spillover area for parking right <laughs> so if they run into an issue they're gonna they're gonna have to up their carpooling or figure out a way to make sure they can keep more and, properties. And if if they were to let's assume for a moment they do pursue it, the the property owner does pursue it with uh, the DOT and and the railroad, uh, and they were denied. The remedy is through town staff, right? They don't have to come back to us. They just need to somehow fix it. Yeah, because right. there is a right. plan on file from from days in the past. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, yeah Mr. Gillespie um, raises a good point, and. It just may take a bit of time with the state of Connecticut to get a I lease or, uh, okay. I know. <laughs> those those DOT will, guys will be, are slow. But it will be faster than Amtrak, I mean, than the railroad. <laughs> way <faster. laughs> it will be way faster. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have a motion to approve and it's been seconded. Uh, any additional dialogue otherwise? All those in favor say aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Is there anyone opposed? All right, very good. Thank you very much, good luck. Good luck. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Weathersfield. I also want to thank all the volunteers on this committee that me volunteer their time. I thank you all. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we do this for fun. <laughs> all righty. Uh, we are on to the final, right? Yep. 3.5, a public hearing for application 1941-17-Z. DKR, care of Denise, uh, Dinesh Patel, seeking a special permit in accordance with section 5.2 uh, to construct a three-story, 30,000 square foot print, 90,000 square foot total, because it's three floors, self-storage facility. Uh, in addition to that, 1,650 square feet of outdoor storage, which is a number of storage units, and a single-story, 4,500 square foot gas station slash convenience store. This is at 1881. Thank you for uh, Good evening. hanging with us. Good Certainly. evening. Um, I'm just going to hand out, I have uh, some Sounds updated elevations. I did not have an opportunity to provide them to town staff. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to them. Sounds good. Thank you. And I also apologize. I think I only have six copies. I, I took a guess and fell short. So. Uh, uh, For the record, my name is Nathan Kirshner. I'm a project manager with Langen Engineering uh, Environmental Services at uh, New Haven, Connecticut. Uh, with me this evening uh, is both the property owner, Greg Solari, I apologize if I pronounced your name wrong, Greg, uh, as well as from D uh, DKR, uh, Dinesh Patel. Uh, if any operational or application questions come up, I'm sure they'd be happy to accommodate the board. Um, as is our first presentation, I'll give a quick walkthrough uh, as to the, the property and the project. Um, I will, I guess, open up by stating, as uh, Chairman Harley indicated, the property is located at 1881 Berlin Turnpike. Um, tentatively, um, there's, a, there's a proposed subdivision line, which I'll discuss a little bit with the commission, for the rear or, I apologize, west side of the property to be um, subdivided into 45 Arrow Road. Um, before you tonight is the site plan approval for the gas station and convenience slash retail use for the eastern portion of the property, as well as the special permit for the self-storage facility. Um, as well as with the special permit, we are requesting a waiver for five parking spaces associated with the um, self-storage facility. Um, in terms of a quick flyover on the actual project site, um, the mics don't move, do they? Uh, no, they actually don't. It just swing it over. So. Talk loud. It'll, yeah. it'll pick up. Thank you. Um, and if I need to speak louder, let me know. That's good. Uh, to orient everybody, to the right side of the page is the Berlin Turnpike. Uh, this road running up here um, is Arrow Road. 
and to the rear of the property or left hand side of the plan is Russell Road. Um, it's an undeveloped site across from Cumberland Farms, which is right here, and I believe the uh, truck application was this site here. Uh, so I'm, I'm guessing we have a lot of the same same neighbors. Um, we do have a plan. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <To> start. <laughs> thank you. We do, we, we do what we can, Hames, hey, please. Uh, the, the property itself, as I said, is 1881 Brown Turnpike. It's currently undeveloped site. It is about 3.14 uh, acres. The proposal, as uh, Chairman Harley indicated, is to develop the um, eastern portion of the site with a gas station uh, and at approximately 2,950 square foot convenience store. Um, the rear portion of the site, or I guess, uh, western portion of the site will be developed with a three-story, 30,000 square foot footprint um, self-storage facility, as well as 11 standalone self-storage units. Um, really, the, the big driving point of discussion on the site layout and site design here is the topography of the site. Uh, anybody who's familiar with the area, there's about a 78-foot grade change from uh, the intersection of the Berlin Turnpike and Arrow and the intersection of Arrow and Russell. So in laying out the site, um, obviously, we did need to um, include a retaining wall, which at some points is as high as 25 feet. Um, part of the due diligence um, and cautious development nature that uh, DKR uh, worked under was we did first thing foremost was um, we did ground penetrating radar based on the site's history as well as a geotechnical investigation to determine what the rock was like out there, what the soil profiles were like, groundwater and things of that nature to make sure what we're proposing can in fact be built. Um, the site has a comprehensive stormwater management and, ma and water quality plan. There's, um, I guess, two separate stormwater systems, one for the storage facility, which does include two underground detention systems, as well as a completely separate system for the gas station. Um, we've worked, uh, we received extensive comments from town staff uh, based on our initial application, worked through some of those. I believe the application was, we, we attempted to present uh, several months back when we received staff comments, it was decided that given the quantity of those, we needed to kind of sharpen the pencils and tighten up the plan a little bit. Um, the, you know, in terms of stormwater and, stormwater and utilities, all utility infrastructure is in Arrow Road. We're proposing, you know, um, there, there's no need for septic or sanitary. There's water, water sewer, electric and gas all within Arrow. So uh, utility connections will be made on Arrow Road, not within the Berlin Turnpike. Um, in terms of the um, site access, we are proposing two access points to the gas station, a dedicated right in right out on the Berlin Turnpike, which is currently under review with the DOT. Uh, we received some initial questions from the DOT, no indicator with respect to favor, you know, their, their opinion on the application. Um, all the DOT has been telling us kind of nationally is they're kind of across the board, I should say, is they're expecting layoffs, so they're running a little slower than normal. Um, I, w if the commission wants me to guess on when we'll get comments back, I'm not really sure at this time, but we are uh, pushing them as appropriate to, to get some feedback. And it is through a permit process. You're not going to the OSTA. It's we do not need an OSTA permit, correct. We need an encroachment permit for the curb cut. Um, as part of the application to both the town and DOT, we did submit a traffic study. Um, it was a request from the town, and then the DOT said since it was available, they would like to review it. Um, access for the self-storage facility, it's uh, really a, a tiered building. Uh, I'm going to step away from the mic again, see if you guys can hear me. Um, there's a, a lower entrance um, about halfway up the property here um, to accommodate grade changes. There's a second story walkout um, farther west along Arrow Road. Um, so there are two full access drives uh, for the storage facility. The, you know, the, from a site layout utility perspective, uh, we feel the design's, you know, pretty substantial. The, I guess, at this point, there's two comment letters that I'm aware of that are still outstanding. One from, um, I always forget his last name, Mr. Uh, Gregor, the town engineer, mm -hmm. as well as another one from, uh, Mr. LaFontaine, who I believe is sitting in the back. Um, at this point, I'd like to kind of go through those comments uh, as I think that those are probably in line with what most of the questions from the commission would be. Um, I'll kind of head, off, head you off at the pass. 
Um, starting with Mr. Fon uh, LaFontaine's comments. Um, and does everybody have a copy? Or we, we do somewhere in this thing. Okay. You know, I don't, uh, maybe the staff can find, well, not the staff, maybe the commission can will find it if you give us the date. Um, sure. You know, quite honestly, since there are a lot of people that aren't engineers, what they're going to be listening to is, did you comply? And if not, we're going to turn Certainly. to Peter and say, so where did we go from there? Okay. Is the eight comments from LaFontaine? Correct. There was a comment letter on June 14th, so uh, we, we would have responded to that. Un unfortunately, time kind of limited our ability. Um, a lot of those comments are um, somewhat administrative in nature. Uh, you know, comment one is with respect to the subdivision, which I alluded to. Um, while we're not that's not currently part of the application in front of the commission. We have every expectation of coming back before the commission for the proposed subdivision. Uh, I did speak to Mr. LaFontaine. He has reviewed the subdivision plan. One of the, the timing issues was the subdivision had to go to the uh, Capital Regional Council of Governments, which had a longer, I believe it's a 35 day notification period. Um, so we couldn't get the site plan application on the agenda um, due to some of the contract requirements between the owner and the applicant. Uh, we, we couldn't wait, unfortunately. We really needed to present this application, uh, ideally get the ball rolling here. The intent would be to start construction with approval from the commission um, in late summer, early fall um, to get as far as they can, obviously, before winter conditions. Um, so as I said, the subdivision application is pending. The, the subdivision line as it stands now with the approval this evening, um, we'd be back for a simple uh, Two lot subdivision. Uh, comment number two is with respect to the height shown on the zoning table, which incorrectly lists the zoning regulation section. Uh, just a clerical item. The other comment on number or the other item of part of, uh, with regards to number two is the exact height of the two proposed buildings. The uh, plan I provided, and actually there was quite a long discussion with uh, Mr. LaFontaine regarding the definition of the building height with respect to the codes and how that was interpreted um, with or without I guess as the subdivision isn't currently part of the application the front is, frontage is defined by the narrowest street frontage uh, we, we actually don't have a corner we have one property with three uh, with um, frontage on three roads um, the narrowest frontage we have actually is Russell Road uh, to be Clear, it's actually an existing non-conforming frontage um, because it's less than I believe it's the hundred foot um, that's required. The height definition is based on the average grade of the building along the frontage. So for the property as a whole, the building height would really be calculated based on the average height along this facade, as Russell Road would be the frontage. Um, the updated plans that I, I circulated. Uh, nothing's changed with respect to the building height. We just added the dimensional callouts um, that call out the building height to be uh, a total of 32 feet um, per zoning code. So the maximum allowable, I believe, is 45 feet. So we're compliant with the building height. Is that to the parapet or is that to the physical roof? That's to the parapet. Thank you. Yep. Uh, item number three. Um, it's just a, it's another clerical item. We, we quoted the wrong section of the regulations. That's obviously a, an easy fix. Um, details regarding the 11 outside storage units, those are included in the supplemental uh, elevations I sent, uh, circulated just now. I, I thought they were in the original packet. I don't know how they got excluded. Um, they're consistent with the architecture of the, the storage facility. Um, one thing to keep in mind with respect to the 11, those 11 standalone units is they are pretty invisible uh, given the grade changes, their location behind the convenience store um, and tucked in there between by the, uh, the main storage building. The, let's see, item number five, as I mentioned, we are requesting a waiver of five parking spaces associated with the storage facility. Um, it's rare that I'm requesting less parking as opposed to more parking uh, from a commission. Most of the time it's the applicant who's requesting absurd amounts of parking. Um, the operator is does storage facilities nationally. They feel that the 32 spaces is more than adequate for what they see in terms of parking usage. Um, there's also on the lower level a drive-in parking area that allows for two vehicles at a time to be inside the building uh, for offloading of um, whatever they're utilizing the storage space for. 
southern there's a actually another clerical item and I apologize I guess uh, we were in, kind of in a rush here the item seven was on the actual site plan drawings we note six spaces here we do know a total of the, the count in the t zoning table is accurate uh, this the call out on the site plans uh, calls out six when in fact it's four so I believe there's a total of I didn't sh Uh, 15 spaces um, for the convenience store, which is compliant with the zoning regulations. Um, the one recurring comment was with respect to details for the gas station canopy. Um, as um, DKR is negotiating with several prospective tenants, um, we understand that that item's outstanding. Our hope would be that it would be reviewed from a, a at the building. Um, building permit level. Uh, it's going to be a standard ga uh, gas station um, canopy from a structural perspective. Obviously, building code will review it. Um, we can certainly discuss any restrictions or conditions that the commission would like to put with regards to colors or things of that nature uh, on the canopy. But ultimately, um, signage really tends to be the, the sticking point on gas station canopies. And uh, we're not proposing any signage associated with that at this time. That would be a separate application once a tenant's established. The, again, comment number eight was that there was an original comment with regards to the location of the um, air compressor unit. We've relocated that based on uh, a meeting we had with town staff, and my understanding is it's an acceptable location to all members of staff. Um, so the, there's really, as I said, a few clerical items that I, I see need to be revised um, prior to obtaining a signatures on the plans. Um, I can go through Mr. Gregor's comments as well. Um, I don't know if you want to go through all those comments first or if the commission has any comments with respect to this memo that they'd like to discuss further. I, I mean, I have a gas station question. But go ahead, Matt, can, just go ahead and get started. Well, I don't know about you, but I've got a few questions and just start going. The, uh, the tank location for the gas station, it's that southeast corner there. The, the underground tank? Yeah. Correct. It's the, it's these two right here. Oh, that, it's, oh, so I, I they're, thought They're underground there. between the canopy and the. And that's, that's where the truck is going to go and park and. Correct. Refill. Okay. Correct. Yeah, the, I think if you were looking at this one. That's, it was. Yep, that's the underground uh, detention system. As I'm looking at here. Okay, good. Sure. That solves like nine of my questions. So. so Glad I answered that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean. <clears throat> I'm just I'm I'm trying to picture the site. 75, 78 feet of elevation difference. The gas station, the gas station itself, closer blocks some of that visual. The gas station, I didn't <clears throat> see an elevation on it, but it looks like it's effectively a two-story building. It must be 30-ish feet high. Correct. Yeah. There's a. Um, a I'm not an architect, so I apologize. I should know the term off the top of my head, but there's a, there's a, a slope roof associated with the, that to kind of help with the massing, particularly with the retaining wall behind it. Right. So did you guys make a, an effort, and, and I don't know if we're going to be able to resolve this. Tonight. I guess I I could benefit from a view from the Berlin Turnpike. What is this thing going to look like? Because clearly that the second structure in back is pretty darn massive, but I also suspect that as you're driving by on the and turnpike if you've got a 30-foot mass in front of you and a retaining wall behind it that the building sitting up on top if you start doing the math I think the top of the building is a hundred feet above of the Berlin turnpike it's 30 feet you said it's 30 feet above the frontage on the other side and that's 75 right uh, no it's 30 and to clarify that point so actually I'm gonna need a grading plan to con confirm it it's 30 feet from this sidewalk here. This continues to slope up to Arrow Road. Um, okay. So just to clarify, um, actually. Fair, fair enough. So it's not, and I appreciate No, it's that. not. So actually, it's, I apologize. I gave, out all the, I gave out all the copies of the elevation. Still, it's probably 80 feet okay. to the top of that parapet. But it's probably not that bad because it's set all the way back and you've got a 30 foot mass in front of you. And I guess I, I could benefit from that visual. And, uh, I'll be myself. I'll be very candid. Our, <laughs> our our hope would be to meet make some resolution this evening. I don't know that we'll be able to get there. Um, I can 
certainly walk through some of the, the, the points of that ele those elevations. Um, the and just to clarify on that one point, the Russell Road's at about th elevation 302, and the, the top of the parapet is elevation 311. Um, so we're not proposing the elimination of any of these trees. So as you're driving down Russell Road, you, you're probably not. I mean, obviously, as you come across the intersection, you'll see some of the building massing. Yep. Um, but if you're standing here, you're going to see trees. You might see some of the building through the wood line. Um, but we're not planning to raise all those trees in that area. Some will obviously need to be for construction purposes, obviously. Um, but it really, it's we're looking at about 9, 10 feet above Russell Road for the parapet itself. The building structure is even lower than that. Um, and then, I guess, talking a little bit more with respect to those elevations, the, you know, there's a gentle slope, I'd, I will say, in the lawn area here. Um, and being sensitive to the aesthetics, you can see we did do some pretty good landscape massing. There's some trees, some ground cover and things of that nature, which will, you know, reach a mature height of about, you know, hip height or so. Um, so as you're driving along the Berlin Turnpike, you will see the gas station. Um, there's also some trees along the wall, the height of the this building, as I indicated, part of that is to reduce that that mass, that that large feel to the retaining wall. Yeah. Um, you know, and we're also proposing you know something uh, a ready rock type wall in nature, which would be a textured wall. Um, you know, not a cast in place gray industrial concrete wall. Um, so I, I think, you know, from an aesthetics perspective, from the term Berlin Turnpike as well as Russell Road, it'll it'll it won't feel as massive as the bird's eye view does. So the public doesn't. <clears throat> doesn't have those plans so the, the height of the retaining wall back there is sure uh, the retaining wall at its worst or at its tallest I should say um, is about 25 feet and that's directly behind the convenience store so the, the okay. convenience store which is a little more aesthetically pleasing with earth tones and some you know, natural stone finishes and facades shingled roof um, that's 31 feet in height so the building will actually mass it will cover it right correct I'll give these back to you. Okay. I might, I might Other, other questions for the applicant? For the um, two questions, the for the wall, the great separation, um, were there any iterations in terms of what that actual finished floor elevation was going to be for the storage facility? Did you try to we we try to go a little bit lower so that you can put like two medium-sized walls instead of one large one in the front? We, we did. Uh, one of the things we were trying to be very sensitive to, uh, and it also comes into play with respect to the um, re request for waiver with the parking, was to try to keep everything um, as close to the Berlin Turnpike as possible within reason. And, uh, you know, that's not to say that you couldn't push everything further. As you push things further, the retaining wall will end up getting a little mm -hmm. bigger. Um, but being sensitive to the immediate residential will butter to the southwest, um, just as well as the residential nature of Arrow Road, of Russell Road, we were really trying to keep things more to the, you know, commercial industrial side of the site. Um, and you know, as we balance the site, um, we end up with approximately I think 10,000 cubic yards of export, um, which for a, you know, three plus acre site um, with a 25 foot retaining wall is pretty well balanced. I'd have to, I'll, in, in my professional opinion. Were there um, a gas station? right next to a brand new gas station. Is that, um, wh were there, like wh what kind of studies go into uh, what the feasibility I'll, of, a, of okay. a location like that? I'll, I'll open up by saying I'm not a gas station operator. Um, I will say the model for gas stations is very similar. Um, I, I spent a good portion of my career doing uh, retail banks mm -hmm. and they typically would like to do, they, they like being, in a centralized location. I know if you, in you know, the Berlin Turnpike actually is a rare exception. I know Washington Street and Middletown, you have five or six gas stations within a baseball throw of each other. Um, particularly with respect to this site, I think part of the appeal is it has inter it has a signalized exit. Um, if you have, you miss the Cumberland Farms, you can see the gas station to, just to the south, pull in the right end, come back out the signal, and then carry on your way. Um, so it's definitely part of the gas station, gas station operator's model to kind of put them in a in an, a centralized location. So, so this is a, a rather massive development site, um, and and normally, what, to your point, when we get when we get to an approval process, we're usually very dependent upon 
town staff to tell us that all comments incorporated, that the town engineer is reviewed, and they're okay with everything and, and your responses. Um, I, I, I didn't see any paperwork along those lines. It seems like there were comments that went out and you tried to answer some of the questions, but are they all answered? And, and is either one or the other of you help us understand the landscaping plan and the requirements thereof? Okay, so in terms of uh, comments outstanding, I can't um, say at this moment uh, that I'd like, I'd like to be in a better position to give you that. Uh, uh, we're, we're also missing, uh, and I don't think you've seen anything from our fire marshal. Comments have never surfaced in writing from him. Did you get anything from the fire marshal? We have not, no. Okay, um, so there are some things uh, outstanding that I think you probably uh, need to see. In terms of the... Uh, landscaping did you have a specific question or just um, an overall uh, the applicant didn't make a presentation okay does it oh. meet all the landscaping requirements does no. it not are there waivers associated with it I hear a waiver for a parking there there's and mr. Gillespie I can speak to that if need be I kind of glossed over that went right into some of the comment letters um, the landscape plan as we're proposing does not require any waivers um, as you can see the bold green indicates the proposal proposed landscape improvements um, we have trees along the front along all the frontages uh, with the exception of uh, Russell which we're staying away from with an intent to be sensitive to that that area um, throughout the site and throughout the perimeter there's um, you know, a variety of you know uh, ground cover and landscape improvements um, do you understand just how unique that is what's that that we're proposing no waivers on the landscape yeah. <laughs> all you know there's, there's trees yep. in all of our island in all the islands and all this other kind of stuff so and that's fine I sure uh, and, and I, I I say with relatively high confidence there's no, no waivers requested only in that uh, in the two rounds of staff comments we didn't receive any with yeah, regards yeah, to yeah, okay. the, the need for a waiver so Peter was in the middle I, of something. Well, I, Actually, I, I, I'll have to go back and check. I did have comments on the landscaping plan. The initial review did not have the calculations. Um, there was a, an issue with the 25-foot landscape buffer, uh, but I will, uh, I will look at the revised plan and confirm that for you. But I did have uh, one, two, three, four, five comments on the original plan. Okay. Other questions for the applicant? Wow. Well, I, I, um, I had a couple questions on, on both on both of the sites. Um, first of all, the, the storage facility. Can you, can you talk about, you have two entrances, sure. and can you just show everyone how a truck <coughs> will be coming in and out of that facility? Certainly. Um, actually, the first comment on um, Mr. Gregor's uh, letter, which mm -hmm. uh, it may or may not be what's driving yep. your question. Um, was with respect to concerns that he raised um, about an 18-wheeler or a tractor-trailer truck accessing the site. We talked with the operator. Uh, we talked with uh, D D um, Dinesh himself also he weighed in on this topic. Um, to, to clarify them, it's kind of interesting. We're doing a lot of storage facilities throughout the country now. Uh, it seems to be a new, new trend. But what we're seeing is, for one, the storage units are the largest one is 150 square feet in size. Um, one of the operators we spoke to said, I never have seen an 18-wheeler enter one of my sites. The others have said, there's no reason for them to enter our sites. I'll never say never, but it's not the model. It's not what comes onto the site, um, especially given that part of the uh, the intent here is for you to you know, pull into the site, offload your vehicle inside the building, um, you know, being more sensitive to weather conditions and things of that nature. Um, it wouldn't accommodate an 18-wheeler. Needless to say, you can't get an 18-wheeler inside the building. Um, our and I had spoken with uh, Mr. Gregor about this, was we don't foresee any 18-wheelers accessing this site. This isn't a intended to be a use that you're moving across country and you need to store stuff on, you need to store your house on site for, you know, X number of days. It's a month to month, you, you know, the, 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 uh, the standard customer that uses this that I keep hearing about is someone who's hosting Tupperware parties or things of that nature and doesn't want to store their stuff in the basement because their husband's getting upset. It's taking up so much space. <laughs> so they f use, utilize so, off-site storage. So it's really not, the storage is not really designed if you're, cross, if you're traveling cross-country and you're moving and you're putting your Correct. whole house Correct, and that's in not there. to say someone couldn't, okay. in theory, rent out 
15 units, it just really wouldn't be cost effective. There's other ways to do that. Um, really, the intent is in 150 square feet that you're... 150 square feet, okay. And that's, as I said, the largest. There's smaller units, too. I think as small as 50 square feet. Um, I think it's 10 by 5 is the smallest unit you can get. So when you discuss this with, um, with the town engineer, uh, you know, like you're um, confirming the type of trucks that you have there and what the movement would be like because he was questioning that right he, about the he was so and what was the, his response well to the that? site in, in in his own memo he states <laughs> that the site does accommodate a single unit box truck um you know the big the large rider or u-haul trucks um there's nothing i can I, I mean the commission could in theory put a restriction i guess stating that 18 wheelers couldn't access the site but i don't know how that would be enforced um i also don't even know how the operator could you know, chase away someone who pulls up with an 18 wheeler and wants to offload 150 square feet of materials. Um, it's just, it's not their model. I don't see it really being an issue. Um, if once in five years an 18 wheeler shows up, I could think of worse things to happen, but I really don't think even that frequently that would occur. So a truck would pull in and then could just back out. I think you have like a. Correct. The, um, can you one of the reasons, another limiting factor on the parking was this really, the hammerhead here. Yep as well as the hammerhead here are designed so that a single unit box truck could back in and turn around. So there's no need for them to back out onto the street, uh, obviously as a safety concern. Yeah, that was one of my concerns. Sure. So, so, so pardon my ignorance, it's along those lines. How exactly does this operate? 150 square feet, I'm looking at three, it's two or three floors of... Correct. And, and you got all these garage doors. I've never been in one. Do, I think I heard interior offloading, right? Is there a path in? Do you, can you take a there's, box truck and move it all the way down, or do they op do they have to like move it all the way down the hallways, whatever it is? There's, uh, and I apologize, Dinesh, I don't know if you can speak to the operations or if you want me to just do my best to elaborate. Um, I, I, the intent would be, I believe the garage, the um, access doors wouldn't even accommodate a single unit 30. Um, a, a minivan, a full-size pickup truck, those can get in there. Um, there's a height restriction, obviously. Uh, you'd offload your equip, your gear. One of the reasons for the parapet mm -hmm. is you do have an elevator inside the building, so you, if you're on the third floor, you'd load your totes or whatever you have onto the elevator, bring them up to your floor, or offload from there. Um, it's definitely a different storage facility than you know. I, I always thought of Silence of the Lambs when I thought of storage facilities. <laughs> um, to be very candid, that's no longer really the model. It's a well lit, climate controlled. <laughs> I got to come up with a better reference, and I apologize, but that's really that well, I think does the, the best. Stand the standalones are are that. Right? Um, well, even even there, the lighting insecurity, you know, that's provided on the sites, you know, far more enhanced than I think what we all kind of you know grew up thinking about with respect to storage. Loads. So if you go in there, you've got you know you're going up by elevator like an apartment building. And you've got corridors where people just Correct. take their hand with trucks in and bring it to the front and stuff? Correct. Wow. Okay. And the, um, some storage facility units like this have gates where you're putting a keypad and it's automated and it's opening and making I, noise and stuff. I believe. Never, not, not at all a possibility here, potential? Um, I, would, I would state that we would be happy to condition any approval that if any gates are Oh, no, automated I'm just opening. Like if that's, no, the intent. Some, the some the intent. There, there's. That, I wasn't sure no, this one does not. The intent would be the the access drives aren't gated. They're they're access. Um, there's an employee. There's I believe because one. Of visibility in, or something. Correct. Like um, I, I think more just the model. Yeah, the, it's all internal, right? The right. Old, there's the there's this, one. This one looks all internal. Some of the other ones that you drive around like right. a whole bunch of external units. Well, that's my experience too. The yeah. um. And then from an employee perspective, there's just there's one employee who's really there to, if you want to rent a unit, they're, they're not there so much as a security measure as they are, uh, you, you want to sign a lease to rent a unit. Um, the facility is only open um, during normal business hours. Uh, I shouldn't say normal business hours, I believe it's 7.30 to 10 p.m. would be when you could access your unit. Uh, it's not a 24-hour access situation. Tony? You're familiar with the ones on Jordan Lane and in, in, uh, Sawstein Highway? Is it comparable to that type of facility? I'm not. Um, do you happen to know what the name of them is? No. Extra, Extra space. Extra space. Actually, I'm very familiar about their location. And we coming up a lot with high tech this location. But this location, like every time the stomach of 9 or uh, 7 30 in the morning or something, whenever they come to the door inside, we have a digital key. So every person will have a digital key. So we 
kind of do it a little bit different than extra storage. You want an elevator, whenever an elevator is going to the third floor, you will have the general key to press that elevator. You want to go to the third floor, so we monitor. So that security will, will be part of that key yes, introduction. Yes, yes. And exclusive. that security will be monitored by computer guys also to tell if at 7 o'clock night, which storage can open the storage facility also. Uh, and I can I can be programmed to watch from my office also. Sure. Okay, how many people coming in today? What transactions can be done? That was my next question. There'll yeah. be lighting, <laughs> cameras, the security yeah, that's referenced by the police department will be there. We'll be there. about 42 to 48 cameras also throughout the store. And the, um, this will be a metal frame building, a metal structure? Metal right, structure. Metal structure, I think that's it. Will it be heated? Uh, it's a climate control state, so it will be heated. We kind of miss George, don't we? His questions yeah. kind of prompt I've you. I've been to this place. <laughs> a quick question. Can you go through the traffic flow for the gas station real quick? Like where cars come in and Certainly. how they exit? Will they come off the Berlin Group and exit off Arrow? I'm just curious. Uh, I mean, there's flexibility in the sense that um, there's a left-hand turn lane on the Berlin Turnpike northbound. They could access the site by taking a left on Arrow Road and then into the gas station. Uh, they could then, then leave, continue northbound by going back to the signal and out. Um, they could go south by coming out either at the signal if they wanted to, or they could take the right out here. Uh, it's a divided highway, so this is only a right in, right out for southbound traffic. Um, northbound would be exiting from this curb cut on Arrow Road, which is across from the motel curb cut, just to give you a kind of proximity as to where it is. Um, and then they, they can come back out to the signal and based on current this, the current roadway layout, they can take a, they can go northbound or uh, they can go northbound through or southbound. Does that clarify? Okay, yeah. I just I mean, I've seen cars stack at Arrow Road because of Cumberland Farm, so I just want to. Right. Um, the the challenge with uh, Cumberland Farms is they don't have a, a right they don't have a southbound exit that doesn't put you into that intersection. Um, our traffic study shows a pretty ma nominal impact on, I believe it has, shows like almost a net zero impact on the Arrow Road intersection because the majority of the traffic projected to access the gas station is southbound and the majority of people who are going to be leaving the gas station are going to continue in a southbound direction. They'd buy, all, I think every one of us would choose to bypass the signal and go out the right bound. And you have the advantage here of when the signal's red, you have free movement southbound. Um, so it eliminates some of the, the, ch the, the queuing issues that Cumberland Farm has. Does the DOT have any comments in terms of the right entrance to southbound being in the lane that is exiting? So for how long, how long are you in that lane before you can? Sure, they have, we have, as I had mentioned at the beginning, we have, haven't heard any comments back. That's, that's the challenge with that right-hand turn is that sure. you're, you're in a trap. If, you assuming, are. Other, assuming you don't want to go on to 175. Correct. You're, uh, in you're in a, Other than you can, you, your timing is with the red light. You can get out of that lane pretty easily. Sure. Yeah. yeah it'll operate probably very similar to what goes on at uh, the sit go farther down where the lane is dropping as you're trying to take Yeah, there's going to be times a day where it's going to be a problem because everybody, people don't realize on that 175 uh, westbound, people don't realize that it's free flow. Like they just may wait for other cars. So that backs all the way up to the Dean, uh, to the Dean, to the Berlin Turnpike. And that's going to prevent people from being able to take that right turn off. But DOT's got that. Right? Yeah, and they will someday. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is there anybody in the audience who'd like to speak? Um, so if you'll uh, sure. let somebody come to the mic, come on up. Okay. Thank Any you. objections to you using the table? Right. My name's Mary Rum. I live at 10 Tanner Crossing right in the neighborhood. I had a couple questions, but I, I did have a concern, and the concern really is the traffic. Um, I, I hit that at commuting hours and in the morning and in the evening and I head south and I come north at night and oftentimes you can't even get left onto Arrow Road because the people coming out of Hartford south on the Berlin Turnpike drive right into the intersection and, and it's total gridlock. The light turns red, there's traffic backed up to get on 175. 
So um, there's, I don't even see how anybody could exit out of that lot unless it's on, on, uh, in the exit lane, unless it's a time of day when there's very little traffic. And um, both of those are in, in and out, like both of these entrances, you can come in and out, in and out. It's a right so, in only on the Berlin Turnpike. So I'll, I'll try to answer because technically. So <laughs> the one on the one on Arrow Road is no no control, right? You're just in and out. The one I say that right? Yeah. Okay. The one on Berlin Turnpike is a right in, right out. So you can slide in, you can slide out. Okay, so you drive, you pull in, and then you you'd drive north to well, use the pumps, and then if you're coming south, south out of Hartford, again. right? Okay. I, has any? I know you said you did a traffic study. I wish um, the the town or the DOT or whoever's responsible for that road would do a study. I've noticed in the last week that um, the traffic light there has changed dramatically. Before it was a five second green, no matter how, car how many cars you have backed up, and I counted it every single time I was parked at that intersection. If you're behind two vehicles in front of you, you've got a line of people trying to get out of the Cumberland Farms lot, um, and they're trying to get over to where you, you're parked, and, and they're waiting forever. You can't even get through that light. You get two people through on a green and um, another two on a red, because nobody's going to wait that long. So in addition to the gridlock, there's the, the whole issue of traffic trying to get out of Cumberland Farms. If people are going to take, if they're driving south on the Berlin Turnpike and they're going to take a right on Arrow to get into that entrance, I think you're, there's going to be traffic backed up everywhere. I think you're underestimating the traffic impact. And I don't have a problem with this application. It, I think it's a great use for the, the site, actually. I'm really, as a, as a person who lives near there and deals with that traffic all the time, I have a serious issue with how this is going to impact a really congested intersection. I mean, if, if you were out there during commuting hours, you would see just how bad it is, seriously. Um, and also, I'm wondering, is there some reason we can't see like a street view of this? This sounds like a really imposing building, and I would love to know what it's going to look like from the side on Arrow Road or from, from the Berlin Turnpike looking up the hill. It just, it sounds like it's going to be some kind of behemoth. You talk about um, there's the 25-foot retaining wall, but at what elevation is that wall? So how high up are we talking for that? And then there's the building behind it that's going to go up even higher. I have no idea what the exterior of this building looks like. Are there windows? Is it is it sheet metal? It's, you know, what is this going to look like? We're going to have to, those of us who are here from my neighborhood will be driving past this regularly and we're going to have to live with what this looks like. I love your landscaping looks great, but um, what does the building actually look like on the outside? I'd love to know Fair that. And I'd Do you have those you with would. you? We can go over those after she's done. Yeah, very good. Okay, and you said you wanted to subdivide to um, 45 arrow. It, is the intention to develop that or to sell it? So I'll I'll, I'll have him uh, respond to that as well. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, it's right. the intention to. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> to clarify. You said to that earlier, right? Um, currently, the entire 3.14 acres is the. The 3.14 acres is the parcel, as part of the subdivision. The address, 1881 Berlin Turnpike, would be this. This piece here is Arrow Road. Would be the 45 Arrow Road part. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were going to break off that little chunk in in the back. No, is that part of the that, property that, also? That will remain. That just stays that way next to the Arrow house. Road, right. Okay. I thought maybe it'd turn into a business. Those poor people are going to have a storage facility right in their backyard. Um, uh, so the only exterior storage that. Um, is going to be those 11 storage units, correct? There's not going to be like boats or, or cars or anything parked outside. There's no mechanism for storage of things of that nature outside. So thank you, thank you for that question. We'll ask him that one. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for reminding us. Was there an answer? Or, or I don't, oh, I don't get to hear an answer. We're, we're gonna, oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, no problem. <laughs> I was waiting for him to say something. No, no, we'll um, we'll yeah. grill him for you. So, so uh, thank you. So I would just end on seriously the traffic. I'm, I'm really concerned about the light. I'm concerned about that intersection. I'm concerned about the traffic flow as an owner who lives there and, and has to go through that intersection twice a day at rush hour. 
Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. You know, I am, because she did ask some pointed questions, I'm going to ask him to come up and take care of them now just in case other people have the same thoughts, okay? So in particular, out, outdoor storage, and um, if you do have renderings, could you walk them through the, so the public and see those? Sure. Um, with respect to outdoor storage, no. There's absolutely no proposal, and nor is there any real opportunity uh, for outdoor storage on the site. Thank you. Oh, sorry, I forgot one thing. Is there going to be a fence around this or just the greenery? Is there going to be a fence around it or just the greenery? <laughs> <laughs> We're guess my, yeah. I, I guess my silence of the lambs comments uh, slow fading. The, um, I guess with respect to the fence, there's um, a, a decorative metal fence proposed uh, along the frontage of this wall, or I guess along this wall here because there's an aesthetic component to it, as well as for this portion of the fence. Um, there's, anywhere there's a significant grade change, there is some additional fence for, for safety and liability. For safety and liability, but now I'm doing it. For safety and liability issues. <laughs> um, so on Arrow Road, there is no fencing currently proposed other than where the retaining wall is here. Um, and that's a aluminum decorative metal fence. There's actually details for that within the plan set. On the top of it, safety On the top security. of the wall for fall prevention, correct. Yeah. So there's total open access then into this. They don't. Um, there's no fence. There's no mechanism to keep people out at hours when it's not in operation. So, so that was the question we were asking, and the model is such that it's a commercial building. We don't. Nobody shuts their parking lot off at a commercial building, right? You have to go in and swipe your own card and go into the building for this. So there is no old-fashioned close it off because there's a hundred individual but garage cars doors. Won't work out. Correct. Ten. 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 Completely different model. Appreciate that. Absolutely. I guess, oh, actually, you know what? I think I did. You have a board? Yeah. With respect to the butters, I'll orient myself this way. Uh, I can, I'll flip around as need be. Um, this is the, essentially the conceptual rendering. It's preliminary in nature. With respect, obviously, it's not going to be an aim convenience store. Um, but the intent for the gas station, as I said, is it does have a sloped roof. It does have some natural stone, as well as you know, vinyl siding or hardy boards, some kind of you know, um, um, material with respect to the. the Areas in here. The stone also, you know, is a part of that New England type look. With the 31 foot elevation, um, your retaining wall really will fall about here um, behind it. So as, you're, as you're looking, correct, as you're looking from the ground, <coughs> you would be seeing primarily a building. Obviously, you know, the, wall, the wall is back there. Do, do um, me a favor, keep your voice higher because you sorry. are trying to capture it. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, do you want me to re ask that? To no, you? no, no, we're, we're fine. Um, and then additionally, uh, the current site plan has the dumpster enclosure relocated over here. Um, so you'd further break up that facade of that wall. And that's an, that's an enclosed dumpster. With, it's a wood enclosure. So that would break up the wall behind the building as you're looking at it from the turnpike. For the storage facility, Could you use the microphone's hard to hear. You're, 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 So, so move the boards farther up behind you. Uh, there you go. So the top elevation would be, is the eastern elevation, which is looking, if you're standing in this parking lot, looking at the building itself. Uh, as it is. The orange door here is your access to pull your vehicles into the facility. Along the frontage, there are 
exterior bay doors. That can there's six foot. Six ex they can be accessed from the exterior of the building. And again, that's the that's really the lower parking lot in here. Um, this facade here is along Arrow Road as you're driving up Arrow Road. Um, you can you can see we, we buried the first floor of the building so that the height of the building doesn't isn't extremely massive. Um, in this area, you're you're 22 feet to here, and then you're I believe it was 32 feet to the top of the parapet. Um, again, it's a relatively you know clean aesthetic looking commercial building more than it is the corrugated metal steel boxes that they used to do. Um, the western elevation would be the upper park looking from the upper parking lot which would be in this area. Uh, obviously you'd be significantly screened because all of this is about 30 feet lower than the Arrow Road. Um, and again the, the second Russell Road sorry. Um, and the, the parapet is that maximum height. The rest of this is actually, uh, all of this would probably be below the tree line. Um, and this is probably the side people are least in interested in, which is right here, which is the southern side of the property. Thank you. Sure. Mm So, so just to kind of clarify that, I was just asking Peter about design review process, which is you know the the town's the town's architectural review process. And say it again. So at the time of design review, the elevations for the storage facility were pretty well developed, uh, and I believe they approved uh, that uh, as submitted. The plans for the gas station convenience store, however, were a different concept. Uh, they have not seen the latest uh, iteration, so it will have to go back through that process. Do they have to be finished before we approve it? <laughs> we always try and do that so that there's no hang up, uh, but they did go through it and uh, Denise can probably speak to exactly the disposition of that, but uh, my understanding is they have to go back to design review for the, for the gas station for signage and, and some of those details. So, so thank you. Do we touch on all, all her topics? I, I think so. So Except we'll move. Um, fa fair enough. I think it's going to be a general comment. We'll come back to that. I'm sure. All right. So thank you. Let's move on to the. Good evening. I'm Lynn Burdick. Um, I basically I don't I don't really have a problem. I mean, it's commercial. It needs to be. Um, people have a reason why they want to build things. So. I don't have a problem with that, but I do have a problem with um, the traffic flow, and um, and I, I think it's a serious problem because um, part of what Mary had said, um, in addition to that, I know that there, I think it's a state that's doing some work down the end of Russell Road because traffic coming up Wells Road that goes on to the Berlin Turnpike, and then there's people that come out of Russell Road, there's a stop sign there. Okay. So I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to get people not to stop there because that's where it's backing up onto the Berlin Turnpike. The traffic is going all the way back. But people are also cutting down Russell Road. Instead of going further down, going under the underpass and taking a left to go north on the Berlin Turnpike, they've started taking um, a left so that they go by the Humane Society and they go down Russell Road. Then they zip down Arrow Road and hop onto the Berlin Turnpike. Right. So it's a shortcut. That's been happening more and more. And so as you're going down the Berlin, or as you're going down Arrow Road, what Mary was saying is it's true. They have, for some reason, they've changed it. Like recently, it's longer now. The, the green light the green is longer. On the is, is longer than it was previously. Which is a good thing, if I understand Which is a good correctly. thing, yes. I mean, because I got a red light, I got a ticket going through there. <laughs> 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 so, so they don't are do the it folks. anymore. But, um, but the people coming out of Cumberland Farms, it's really confusing, because they try and come out of Cumberland Farms, they try and get onto Arrow mm -hmm. Road, and especially if they're going uh, if they're going south on the Berlin Turnpike and you're in the outside, outside lane, lane, it's either somebody's going to be polite or you're just going to wait there or they're going to get stuck sitting there. So I just suggest that 
the DOT really needs to look at that. I mean, I don't know enough about this to be able to really talk professionally about it, so I don't pretend to. But I know that it's a problem. I think it needs to be looked at, and I, it needs to be addressed before this whole thing is approved. Um, and I, who knows what they're doing down on the corner of Russell Road. Every time we go by there, they're doing something different. Yeah. yeah. That's what they're doing. Yeah. But I mean, I'm talking so, about the property itself. You just, know, oh, they just were so, going to do so something. You, just so you know, and I was going to call Mary, just so you can spread the word. There is an application now pending in Newington for the corner property. I checked on their planning and zoning yep. website today. I spent four hours looking back through the year. Yeah, so it just was referred to us. I was going to advise the commission at the end of the meeting about that. So we'll be looking at that, but you should be aware there is a pretty substantial new project for that corner mm -hmm. so so they did have an approved sub subdivision they had plan a of that gas station right? hotel they've had several things approved there but um yeah. uh, they're, they're not it's a new one it's a new one so. okay interesting so actually I, I didn't know i saw the work going on at the corner itself and wasn't sure whether it was the <coughs> property owner fulfilling the obligations at this point in other words something was going to happen at the corner or whether it was dot i do know that dot was trying to fix it so that people are less likely to stop, so that it provides more of a free flow into that right lane, and try and keep them from backing up. up it's a the great ramp. excuse me. It's a great idea, but it's it's really frightening when you come to that stop sign and you're going to go on to Wells Road and you see a car coming up and they don't have a blinker on. Yeah, I know. It's I, frightening. I got there too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. It, and it's a dangerous, and it's as dangerous when you take a left. My neighbor was hit there. She took a left. A car in back of her didn't see that she had her blinker on to take a left. The illegal left? No, it was a legal left. At that time? At that time. She was coming up um, Cedar Mountain. She came up Cedar Mountain. She put her blinker on to take a left. Oh, into. To cut over. Into. Right. The man in the truck behind her was on his phone, didn't see her, smacked into her, threw her across the road, and the car coming up this way mm -hmm. hit her broadside. So, I mean, it's a dangerous corner anyway. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, I just stress that um, so that it's looked at before all this other work is done. All right, we'll, we'll go into the process at some point or other Thank about you. the traffic stuff. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I just want to make everyone aware, not only um, one of our concerns, Naomi Morales. Thank you. <laughs> um, right now, there is a bus stop, yep. which is currently right outside of, right in this corner right here. So there's a lot of trucks and a lot of um, illegal parking along the side there so they can go into the Cumberland Farms. And when you're coming off of Berlin Turnpike and the bus is there, a lot of people can't see people leaving Cumberland Farms. I mean, it is such a mess. Now also, the bus stop stops here on the opposite side going towards Hartford, mm -hmm. so that's, that's a huge problem. And as uh, Linda said, there's a lot of traffic at 3.30, 4 o'clock, there was so much traffic going, trying to get into 175 that, I mean, I don't even know how this is gonna work. We currently have three gas stations walking distance from our home. We currently have a storage area right beside our home. There's, I mean, we already have this. So another gas station in this corner where the traffic is massive and we have more traffic now than we ever had on Arrow Road. And this road is constantly falling apart because of all the trucks going up and down it now. I mean, it is really getting bad. So you know, the Department of Transportation really, really needs to take a look at this. I don't know how this is gonna work, to have a fourth gas station 
on this corner. I mean, <laughs> it's just insane. That's my opinion. So I thought I'd let, because no one mentioned the bus. Yeah, I mean, and that bus also stops right in front of the Humane Society. And that's traffic right there. I mean, and I don't even know why they even put the bus stop right here. That is a very dangerous because there's only one lane. So when we're turning, that bus is right there waiting for, for no one because no one takes the bus. So I, I, I just don't get it. That is all. Take that out. Yes. Greatest, gra greatest grandpa. Come on back. So I have a feeling I don't need to introduce myself. I'm grandpa. <laughs> okay. um, I remember I started working at Cedar Crest Hospital in 1989. And uh, Russell Road got all repaved between that time and when I retired in, in the, the year 2000, that's 11 years, and it is a mess. It is. Okay, you, you can see. Not to mention Russell Road itself, but it's a little bit north of, of, of our trucking people, okay? It's right at, before you turn into Tinsmith. It's, it's, it's a disaster. But that's not why I, I originally wanted to get up. I just wanted to comment and back up Amy. We fought tooth and nail against uh, Toll House Brothers. <laughs> Toll Brothers, <laughs> Toll House, it's okay. Cookies. Uh, you know, because we were afraid of things like drainage problems, but also the blasting. I mean, it's bad enough that the quarry, even today, twice, our, our, our buildings shook, okay? And uh, every one of our foundations are cracked. So one of the questions I want to ask these people, if they're going to put this building so low, you know, what kind of rock are they dealing with? I'm sure it's the same thing, the same composition, the shale and, and the bedrock and whatnot. And uh, what, what are the seismic uh, effects and what kind of precautions are they going to take? So that the, the blasting that they're going to have to do in order to get foundations and utilities underground and so forth and so on, to be aware of the fact that um, to try to uh, reduce the impact as much as possible. Thank you very much. Other, were you looking to come up? <clears throat> Ryan Jordan. Okay. I know I put on a few pounds, but I'm on the way down, just so you know. <laughs> All right. First of all, well, I think this is a legal thing anyway, but I wanted to thank the Planning and Zoning Commission for holding this meeting tonight. It shows an interest and respect for the people of Weathersfield and their opinions. I do not want this development. I grew up in the crossings nearby and plan on moving back there as soon as I can afford it. I legitimately enjoy driving down Russell Road toward the crossings and seeing woods on my right knowing that the residents there get to enjoy the same home owning experience that I do. I also enjoy driving down Arrow Road immensely because I see development, development on my left, the former Arrow Tool building, the Elmar and High Ridge motels, I think the name changed, changed from one of those, and Woods on my right. I have enjoyed this since childhood. There is a great balance of development and non-development on that road alone. More importantly, that patch of woods is one of the few, if not the only, in terms of size and proximity to the Berlin Turnpike on the Berlin Turnpike until you reach Berlin. For Weathersfield's sake, it adds to the beauty of our town on that stretch of road. No one would say that the Berlin Turnpike is beautiful, but the Weathersfield portion certainly has potential. Businesses like Mirabelli Automotive, the Atlantic Inn, and the Elaine's Restaurant Plaza do a great job of keeping their storefronts clean and presentable. The Atlas Tile Plaza, which had become kind of an eyesore, recently developed its facade to look much more modern. Until you get to Berlin, the Weathersfield portion of the Berlin Turnpike is the only one that retains small town charm. It is a quieter section, and there is mainly just one row of businesses. It's nice that way. 
A big reason why this is the case is because it is a rare but beautiful piece of land sitting right next to the road. It provides a great balance to the development and reminds you that this is Wethersfield. This is Wethersfield, an old town with lots to offer and charm. Destroying this piece of land would completely eradicate that sense of charm and peace on the Wethersfield portion of the Berlin Turnpike. Every part of Wethersfield matters, especially the portions where out-of-towners first experience Wethersfield. The Silestine Highway has made significant improvements to its aesthetic appeal and continues to do so. The Berlin Turnpike is basically Silestine Highway number two because it runs parallel and has similar development. We don't want to destroy the one part of the Berlin Turnpike that looks beautiful. And I see now that this retains some more trees than I previously thought, but kind of as Mary said, it would be nice to know what this is actually gonna look like and is this the best use of that property? That part of the Berlin Turnpike teeters on being ugly. It could go in one <laughs> direction or the other. So I think it's important that we remember that. Also, because when people first come to Wethersfield, if they look at their phones and, see, and say, where am I? Oh, I'm in Wethersfield. They're going to say, this is kind of a dump, or this is kind of nice. And that translates into later, someone wants to eat at a restaurant in Wethersfield. Nah, eh, Wethersfield looks kind of dumpy from what I've seen. Or, Wethersfield looks okay, maybe I'll go there. Or suggesting moving to Wethersfield. Looks kind of dumpy, or looks kind of nice. Maybe I would like to move there. So these things, even though small, possibly in your minds of what you think about this area, they do matter for the town. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Is, is, is there anybody else who'd like to comment before we turn it back to the uh, applicant? Okay. So, so I'm going to suggest we get to the traffic last. All right. Um, Let's talk about the rock excavation limits and potential precautions as, as may be necessary. So how deep are you going? Uh, you, did, you talked about geological investigation. How, how much you um, can remove? I, I guess with respect to the primary concern being rock excavation in the, with, with respect to with blasting and construction activities, the geotechnical report does indicate that there may be the possibility of blasting being required for the site. Um, that's pretty much a standard note on any geotechnical report because you can't give a guarantee that you know wherever we poke, put holes in the ground, we didn't we we didn't miss something. From the site plan and as we developed it, and I indicated that we were doing our best to balance the site and keep as much material on site. Um, we're the deepest portion that where we investigated that we may need that we're potentially going to need to do blasting would be in this area here. And I say may need to do blasting because as we get, what's out there is it, it's it's weathered rock. It's it's a harder material. Um, again, we're not going 40 feet down. Uh, we're going 10 feet. So there's an op there are other means and methods by which to excavate out that rock. Um, it's kind of a it, it's a balance, right? If you were to blast, it's it's pretty efficient. You can you can get it done very quickly. And there's a lot of regulations with respect to when you could do it, monitoring you need to do with respect to people's wells, with respect to foundations, things of that nature if you were gonna blast. If you don't blast, you, you trade off efficiency and a really there's a really a public perception of noise and explosions and things of that nature. You trade that off for a very long loud excavation process. Um, what could be done with blasting in two to three days could take weeks with hoe rams, which is just constant hammering with, you know, big hydraulic equipment and things of that nature. Um, I would ask that the commission, you know, recognize that if, as we get out in, you know, assuming an approval, assuming we're able to move forward with the project, if we were to start rock excavation before any blasting could be done, um, all the local and state and federal permits would need to be obtained and those permits would restrict hours of operation, types of blasting, monitoring required for butters and things of that nature. So um, again, it's a very minimal based on, on the site and the, the site layout and the site design, um, utilities and things of that nature. We were filling, we're putting material we're taking from back here and putting it against the retaining wall. So we can put the utilities, we can do all, all that stuff in without going into rock because we're actually building upgrade to put those utilities in. The only hard spot, as I said, no pun intended, is the 
at the western driveway, um, which, as I said, is a pretty minor area considering it's a three and a half acre site. Ten, ten feet deep? It's approximately ten feet, but that you'd be from what we've seen from the investigation. Okay. Um, bus stops, I think I, I heard, I think, I think I saw that Peter and, and other staff mentioned that, and I guarantee you DOT will look at that. They um, DOT actually didn't care. Um, DOT deferred us to CT Transit Authority. CT, tr CT Transit commented that all they care about is that we re relocate it to a relatively flat spot, um, consistent with what's out there now. Now, the location that's currently shown, or that's existing, isn't that flat. Um, right. We're moving it actually farther from the intersection. Um, I know the comments were with respect to the bus jamming up the intersection because it's approximately here, um, which impacts your dedicated right turn lane. It impacts your queuing. Uh, the, proposed, the new proposed bus stop location, which CT Transit had no issues or objections to, is further up. So it allows more of an opportunity if that bus is sitting waiting for potential patrons who aren't going to show up, as was indicated by, by the residents, they can go around the bus and still have time, sufficient room before the intersection to get into the appropriate turn lane. So uh, if anything, we're Im improving the eastbound bus stop. Uh, with respect to the, to the westbound bus stop, um, with respect to the westbound bus stop, um, we're not proposing any changes to that. No one's made us aware of any, any issue. CT Transit had, had no con concerns, questions, or comments. On the, on the other side of the road where you, that you're not touching? Correct. Okay. All right. Um, so I, I'm going to offer. Well, I, I'm going to offer my perspective on the whole best use. Um, this commission really doesn't have the authority to suggest to a property owner what they should or should not build on their site, as long as it's consistent with zoning. Um, it's a business. It's a property owner's business decision about what they think can work there, as long as. It's compliant with zoning requirements. That's our job. Um, you know, we have limited, limited or no capacity to say no. The, that's a fourth gas station. That's that's not something we want, and you know, that's really not within our purview. So, um, it is what it is. Um, the traffic. It's it's our concern too, but we also recognize that it is DOT's signal. Uh, and and you heard a question that I asked initially about whether this an, is an OSTA um, that stands for something that <laughs> doesn't matter to you. It, it, it's a much more rigorous process. This is a lower level threshold because there's not that much parking uh, and, and it's a strictly a permit. They go to DOT and they say, this is what I'm doing. They're traffic folks. Uh, and, and other parties will weigh in on what they think the best configuration will be. DOT is not going to say you can't put a gas station there either. They're just going to do what they can to try and make the operational configuration as good as it can be. So DOT will take the lead on that bit of the responsibility here because it is their signal and it is their road. Right? And town staff has input on Arrow because it's town road, but but still DOT owns the signal, so they're going to try and run models and make sure that it works as efficiently as possible without saying, no, you can't do that. All right? That's kind of how the process works. All right? That's why we like to know that they've had contact with DOT and, you know, because in the end they're going to have the final say. Um, all right? So... I think I hit the topics that I heard from the from the questioning. All right. Mm -hmm. Other questions for the applicant? I'm trying to. Where, where do we go tonight? Right. It's getting late. I'm trying to figure out whether we all have enough information. I had a question about the mechanical equipment on the roof. Is there going to be any mechanical equipment? Um, with respect to both buildings, either, either building. One in well, I guess both, but I was particularly concerned about the storage facility. The storage facility will have rooftop mounted HVAC units, and they will be screened as part of the rooftop, uh, as, as part of the, the um, architectural, the, the parapet around the building. And then the gas station? Uh, the, as currently... Okay. 
So you see that corner right up there? <coughs> okay, and that's the back of the building? Yeah, that's the back side. Oh, I see, so it won't be visible. lift to go up and down also. Oh, I see. Yeah, here you go. Fucking doors. That's what I want. Yeah. The hide the mechanicals back there. Yeah. Nice. Um, if I may address the board, I, I know you were, uh, Mr. Chair, you were asking questions with regard to moving forward with the application. Um, yeah, as I had in indicated when we when I introduced the project, um, the applicant's well aware that there are a couple outstanding items with respect to uh, some clear some clarification items that need to be made on the plans, referencing the wrong regulations and things of that nature. Uh, I believe now I lost his memo. So um, Justin, whose last name La, La Fontaine, Mr. Fontaine's mm -hmm. um, comments um, really appear to all be, uh, you know pretty clerical and minor in nature uh, with respect to the subdivision. As I said, we will be back in front of the commission with that. Um, with respect to the gas station architecture, um, although it sounds like it's not necessarily the um, prototypical approach of this commission, we would ask um, for consideration be given to doing a conditional approval um, and allowing us to go back in front of the design review committee for the gas station architecture. Um, we didn't actually go item by item through uh, Mr. Gregor's comments. Um, we actually did have a very healthy uh, email exchange with him, clarifying some of those points and discussion items. Um, they're pretty technical in nature with respect to some of the stormwater stuff. Uh, some of them actually defer back to DOT, who we've been talking to about the stormwater. Um, it would be my hope that the board or would give consideration to providing a conditional approval, uh, as I had indicated. Um, Mr. Patel, as well as the property owner, um, both have uh, a vested interest in moving this project forward, and there's some time sensitivity. Uh, although it feels like it's just getting, we're just getting in the summer now. Um, there's still a bit of a process in front of them to get construction underway. Um, so I, I just ask that the commission take that into consideration. And we're happy to work with the town staff through whatever additional review and approvals need to be made uh, prior to putting plans in front of the commission for signature. Fair enough. Thank Fair you. Enough. Thank you. I will say, looking through the summary for the traffic analysis that was done, the level of service, sort of the grade that you would give the intersection of Berlin Turnpike and Arrow Road was a B. The full build will be a B. And the general queuing analysis summary states that this development adds about two car lengths to the queuing analysis, so it's a relatively minimal according to the synchro analysis that they've done. Um, it'd be yeah, it'd be nice to have maybe more of an explanation to that, but according to the summary that I'm looking at in this report, it seems as if, however this analysis was done, the proposal doesn't seem to impact the obviously terrible nature of the intersection I I understand because I live right near you so obviously but uh, the the general theme from or the summary from the traffic report is that it doesn't negatively impact the traffic to any great extent um, I no I listen well, I get it I get it I'm just sharing I'm, I'm sharing a report right. and from here so don't, don't I'm just looking if, if, if so I mean if <laughs> I'm yes, here, I'm just sharing what the summary right. says. Please, please. Sure. So, so what? So what is either either you can answer it or you can answer it. Does it tell you what is the trip generation? What? Uh, yeah. So there was. Because we didn't really get into the whole. We didn't. No, he, and he, if he has a report. <coughs> um, AMP. Can you speak AMP. to it? Do you, do you know those numbers? Not off the top of my head. No. I thought they had. Let me see. So, this is geotech traffic. And very generally speaking, with respect to traffic, um, you know, I heard comments with respect to people cutting through and using Russell Road, people, you know, as, as a bypass. Um, there's nothing the development or lack of development of this property can do to impact that, um, just to, to clarify that point. Um, in addition, the Berlin Turnpike, as everybody knows, is a a major thoroughfare. Um, even I don't. I'm going to speak very generically, and then I'm going to look up the real numbers. If there's 25,000 cars a day going on the Berlin Turnpike, and we're adding 250 cars per day, that's one percent. Um, I heard a lot of snickering, which uh, you know, you, you got to look at the numbers. It, it's it's the you know it's very subjective. I understand people are very sensitive to the nature of traffic, um, but again, Berlin Turnpike's volume, we're not adding you know a, a major impact to that. 
So I, I don't know if, if this is enough for the rest of the commission, and uh, we may, I mean, we, some of us may think that a traffic person should be here, the person who generated this stuff, but just for the public's understanding, I'm looking at a chart, and it looks like they're talking about 50 vehicles yeah. in a peak coming and going. Um, 50 in, the in a peak hour. Correct. Yeah. Coming the and going. Tib table one does indicate, I guess, your largest peak, um, it, you know, is the, obviously, the gas, the gas station is the larger trip generator. Right. Um, total entering and exiting the site on a Saturday is 127 new trips per day. Um, understanding that, again, with the, with the volume of traffic on the Berlin Turnpike, we're not stating, we're, we're stating that there's new trips. All the 25,000 or whatever that number is, which I'm trying to flip to get to, of those vehicles, sure, a portion of those are going to be coming to the site. There's only 127 that will be new to the site. Um, with respect to the use, I, I just wanted to speak to that very quickly um, and people's concerns with the traffic. The self-storage facility is probably one of the lowest traffic generators that I can possibly think of. Um, it is, you know, we are obviously in the regional commercial district, and Chairman Harley spoke to the Commission's purview with, with limitation, limiting uses on the site. Um, but if abutters are, want to be sensitive or are sensitive to traffic, um, there's, significant, there's a significant list of uses in the regional commercial zone that could be put in front of the Commission with a site plan application only that would have far greater trip generation than the storage facility. Um, right. So just being sensitive to your concerns about traffic as well as your concerns about the use. Um, you're not going to get any. I mean, the, it doesn't get any. Doesn't right, get any the, lower. The storage than facility this. projects 19 trips total in and out on a Saturday. Um, that's less, less than one. You know, that's one and a half cars per hour during the time they're open. All right. So as I as I was stating before, this is a it, the public hearing is still open and we're still collecting information. If people feel comfortable, should I mean I'd still love to see a perspective of what the site kind of looks like because I'm struggling with what that might be from the Berlin Turnpike. Um, I also wouldn't mind hearing from the traffic engineer who's talking to DOT and have some feedback from it. I do understand that that puts them on a t time critical nature. Um, I, you know, I don't know how long it's going to take them to get comments when they put in a permit. If you haven't put in a permit yet. We, we cannot file an encroachment permit until we have a local approval. Right. Right. So, and as I had indicated, um, not on this project specifically, but as Langen, Langen, which does a significant amount of traffic engineering work, um, we were part of a distribution um, that stated that the DOT was expecting longer delays and longer review periods than prior. This was submitted with the original application, I believe, back on, uh, when we, we submitted this back on, on March 31st. So they've had it for over 60 days. We just got comments on drainage last week. Um, I, I really... Yeah. Um, not optimistic in terms of the turnaround time for their comments. I mean, and, based on the, the report itself, I'm inclined to give Langan the benefit of the doubt of the, the traffic analysis that they're doing. I'm curious what the state of any intersection study at uh, mm -hmm. Wells or 175. I'm curious what the status of that is because that's the reason why that intersection is so terrible is because of the upstream traffic issue so yes this won't have a, it'll have a negligible impact on the area roadway network that is the that is the quote yeah. which i i think i would probably agree with because of just the nature of the area right. but it's how long do we have to wait before, because we will be making it slightly worse, but worse. Mm -hmm. How long until that intersection is studied and potentially up upgraded? So I'm, I'm hearing that you're less concerned about the traffic and the DOT. Fair enough. Um, I don't know how others feel. How, how about um, disposition of town staff comments? I, you know, there's gobs of comments here, um, and I don't have a... You know, the last five, here's what you got to do, type of a statement from Derek and Justin and others. So, I mean, there's, just, just to clarify, I only have 21 comments, uh, most really? of which are clear, most of which are relatively clerical in nature. 
um, based on the resubmission. And Mr. Gillespie, as he indicated, we don't have fire marshal comments. So that's fair enough. I mean, I, I went back to a record going back to March and stuff. That Correct. Well, all those comments have been addressed. The, down the subsequent to... memos that were some provided by um, Mr. LaFontaine and Mr. Greger, uh, total um, 21 comments. There's eight on Mr. LaFontaine's, and then there's 13 on Mr. <laughs> on Mr. Greger's. So um, you're referring to the June 15th? There's a June 15th memo as well as a June 14th memo. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and particularly, you know, there's 21 comments, one on each of their memos with respect to the subdivision. Um, I, I could probably whittle it down to about 10 technical comments versus typos slash clarifications. Um, Rich? Yeah, I, I guess my, you know, kind of my perspective at this point is, is similar to Ryan's on the traffic. I mean, you know, there are 25,000 cars a day, and, and there are already, as was pointed out, three gas stations. So the number of people who are suddenly going to decide they want to drive on the Berlin Turnpike because there's this fourth gas station is, is probably, you know, related to family members of the people who own the gas station and work there. <laughs> as opposed to anybody who, who thinks like, oh great, now I can finally get gas. <laughs> um, just by way of perspective, I, I can't remember whether it was 10, 15, or 20 years ago, we were sitting here getting a presentation from DOT on how they were proposing to rebuild the 5 and 15, 175 interchange all on a grade level with these kind of left-hand suicide attack kamikaze turns, you know, underneath <laughs> bridges that, that just scared me until I saw one of those up on, I think it was 3 and 93 in Concord, New Hampshire, and after having driven through one of those, it scared me even more. Um, but, you know, it, it was 10 or 15 years ago, and, and I, I think anybody who dri <laughs> drives on that road, you know, during, during the business hours, um, you know, can attest to the fact that it's a, it's a train wreck. Um, you know, frankly, I've seen people turning left <laughs> going up Pawtucket Street to go down Goff Road and to take a right onto Wells Road to avoid having to stay on the Berlin Turnpike and take a right there. Um, I was coming back from New Britain one day and the traffic in the left turn lane for 5 and 15 was backed up over the top of Cedar Mountain, people in the right-hand lane were whizzing by and then doing U-turns in the intersection or in progress drive, drive to be able to turn back on. So, Daily. Um, you know, obviously this is something that, that's gonna need to be fixed, um, you know, and, and the side effects on Arrow Road and Russell Road just kind of compound it, particularly if um, any of the proposed developments that are going in in the Newington side of Russell Road ever come to fruition. So, um, you know, I, I think my thought on that is similar to Ryan's, which is, you know, yes, it's a horrible situation, but this one, this proposal doesn't make it worse. Um, in fact, I, I think there probably is almost no change in the volume of traffic. You know, there might be actually a, a reduction in the danger by the uncertainty of people coming in and out of the gas station as opposed to the, the speed that they're going now. Um, on the other hand, the fact that we do have, you know, 21 comments that may or may not be clerical, ministerial, or easily resolved, um, that we don't have any comments from the fire marshal, and um, I, I think the chairman's request for some kind of visual display of what this thing is actually going to look like will probably make the commission and the neighbors feel more comfortable with what it is that we're, we're being asked to approve here. Um, and frankly, if it doesn't, then I, I think it, it would be negligent on our part not to at least ask for it and see it. So that, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Thank you. I concur, um, which said, I, I think that uh, visually, I think it's important. I can't grasp what it's gonna look like. Uh, I'm not an engineer. 
the public can't do it, and I, and I think we need it because this is a kind of a, a little different project and you know, with the elevations and everything. And uh, I think we have that responsibility before we would approve something. You know, to say, wow, I didn't know it was going to look like that. So our, so our next meeting is what? Us. July 5th? Wednesday. I think that I think the fifth is a Wednesday. Yes, the fifth of Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so it's July fifth, and and that's when we we typically have the first one in in July and August, right? So we should be meeting on the fifth. Yeah, right? we should. We have, uh, we have two, two other two applications, so um, we will we will plan on meeting that that night anyway. So. So what I'm hearing, I think, from and, and, and if anybody doesn't agree with what I'm thinking. Um, uh, tr a traffic person coming, uh, you know, if we if we hold the hearing open, nobody really is concerned if we don't have a traffic person come talk to it. It's kind of this is background music to what's already happening on the on the Bur on the Southeastern Highway, excuse me, on the Berlin Turnpike. Um, right. But uh, a visual uh, assistance, and I, again, I'm I'm kind of. I'm looking for something from town staff that says, you know, I'm, I'm, I've seen it all, I'm comfortable with it, okay. yeah. Yeah. right? And, and we still really haven't talked about the landscaping. Is, is there, can you confirm what we were told? As, as I say, I didn't go back, uh, unfortunately, and check the final, the, the original set that I had did not have all the required calculations. There is a pretty robust uh, landscaping plan, um, but I just, we yeah. need to see the actual calculations but, and and since so. we're always you know very yep. specific about it, I'd like to check that box. Yep. You know? Yes, yep. it meets it, or no, we need this one variance, and that so it is what it is. And you did say at the beginning of the presentation you needed a waiver of the five parking. We need a spaces. waiver of okay. five parking spaces for the storage. So that would have to be. I I, did, I wasn't aware of that, so we'll have to okay. factor that into the application as well. So. All right. Everybody okay with that? So what we're really talking about is, is leaving the hearing open for the, for two weeks. Just for two weeks. Right. And we'll be here to resolve it as long as, you know, we get the materials. And we're clear there's a strong endorsement here. This is a good yeah. concept. Is a third of the property is still right. woodland. That, that whole corner up there, I think it, uh, the intensity in the, the regional commercial district, as Peter said, and has been stated over and over. The intensity of this site could be five more, five-fold more if we put a shopping strip plaza in there and have a half dozen tenants in a strip mall type thing. Even though we've, lo we've got rid of 17 trucks on the other corner, we still have an <laughs> awful lot of action going, potential action here. And, and I've, I've appraised and looked at uh, uh, probably 20 of these in the state of Connecticut, and they are so low profile. They're profit yielding. They're, most of them are 70, 80. Some is cl close to 99% occupied. They're a good, good uh, facility in this type especially with the type of construction you're proposing. I think uh, as a group, we highly endorse this, but we, I agree that we do need these uh, things clarified a little further. All right. Everybody okay with that? Somebody may want to make a motion to that effect? Make a motion. We continue this hearing to July 5th. Second. All, right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Is there anybody opposed? Uh, let the record note that Rich joined us on this one, so we were up to eight. So um, if, if I may ask just one please. point of clarification, um, actually I guess two, um, in, in lieu of a traffic engineer, I will bring our landscape architect to speak to the specific plant species and things of that nature. Beautiful. Uh, if the commission, unless, you can, unless you can say it's, you know, it's, it's between the two of you talk. If we can, if, if that's satisfactory um, to the commission, I will certainly make sure that's the case. Um, yeah, we'll look the at other that. item that I guess would, that's potentially outstanding, um, is the um, design review committee approval for Thank the you. gas if you station? Can if you can resolve that in the next two uh, weeks, I too. guess my that question goes back to Mrs. Uh, Bradley. I don't know on schedule if that's something that will happen in the next two weeks or has the op a possibility to happen. I'm not. I don't recall the dra the design review committee's schedule. The next schedule would be the night of the planning and zoning meeting. So it'd be after it. So we were, uh, my my perception is I, I wouldn't hold it up for that. Do you guys agree? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you very much. And thank you all for your time. Which is this? Is this yours? <clears throat>
Thank you all for your participation. Um, other business? And if not, go on to the minutes. If you want us to just move on to the minutes? Yeah, just off the, after the minutes. Off. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> the minutes of June 6th, there are um, one, two, there are now seven of us here, so we can certainly approve it. Uh, I'm sure you all read it. Any comments on the on the minutes? Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Anybody like to make a motion on the minutes, please? Motion to approve. Appreciate that, Ryan. Is there a second? Is there a second? Second. Thank you very much, Yolanda. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 So there are seven of us who can say aye. Tom. I was not here. So. Right. Tom Rich, Tom Dean, Ryan Allard, Dave Edwards, Dan Silver, Yolanda. So I think that's seven of us, okay? Tony cannot. All righty, so go back to, did you follow that? Okay, other business? Just uh, an FYI, there was a, um, a law adopted it hasn't been signed by the governor yet but i wanted to put it on your horizon because there may be something you might want to do in regards to it which the statute allows uh sb 922 an act concerning temporary health care structures uh, some folks have jokingly referred this referred to this as the granny flat uh statute but it is a um an effort to uh I wouldn't say exempt from zoning, but to sort of fast track the ability for somebody to get approval at the local level for a temporary health care structure that would be used for elderly uh, folks who might otherwise be in a nursing home. Um, and the statute as written uh, gives the town 15 days to act on an application. It does not have to go through planning and zoning. It's an administrative function. The, these are pre-assembled structures, uh, no more than 500 square feet in size. Uh, they have to meet fire, safety, et cetera. But um, it's a mobile home that you park in You don't have to, if you have a, a, stat, a local zoning regulation that wouldn't allow these, that doesn't, nec that doesn't matter. Uh, you can, uh, on a municipal by municipal basis, opt out of this. Uh, to prevent that, but you have to go through a local process with the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, and then also the legislative body has to vote to opt out, which would be the uh, town council. Um, so uh, I just wanted to make you aware of this. I have no idea whether uh, the governor uh, is not going to sign it, but nevertheless, it was approved um, and um, would it, we would have to give them approval even faster than a normal building permit. So some of the provisions in this are kind of uh, peculiar, but nevertheless, uh, this was just uh, presented to a, at a planning uh, uh, meeting uh, last week. So I wanted to bring it in front of you. I will uh, make copies of this and send it uh, to each of the commission members um, and maybe get a copy of the actual language. But um, it is uh, something we probably just should uh, discuss and that you're aware of this in case uh, after the law gets adopted, you see some of these things uh, popping up in people's backyards. So it's a SB 922, an act concerning temporary health care structures. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it does sound kind of odd, but there are some safeguards, you know, essentially that whoever it is that is in there, if they're no longer needing it, Get it, it gets removed relatively quickly. Yeah. You also have to comply with the normal setbacks and so forth. Uh, you know, it, it's I guess basically I'm smaller than garages that we permit anyway. So, so is, is that something like um, if you're in a residential area, like a, a certain family needs something like that temporarily instead of putting yeah. an elderly person yeah. in a convalescent home, they have a space to have that kind of care? Yep. Okay. Like an apartment? Is that so, yeah, sort of. Uh, it's yep. like a really small modular thing that gets put in, hooked oh. up to utilities. The family member lives there until they no longer 
live need there. to live there and then it's removed. And they're not necessarily cheap, so I'm not sure how many of how many of these you would see, years. but yeah. so I mean we've had temporary classrooms in some of our elementary schools for twenty years too. So mm -hmm. sure. well, that's right. what I'm saying. It's it's yeah. permanent. And then Nothing the is permanent. Well, I know what you mean. So we should, you know, well, I'll, I'll put a, a packet of information together and we'll discuss it at a, uh, on an agenda. And then there is this opt out thing, but it has to obviously be uh, put into effect uh, uh, as well. So we're not quite quite there yet. And then, uh, as I mentioned during the public hearing on, on the Berlin Turnpike, we did get copies of the Planning and Zoning Commission application form for um, the corner of uh, East Cedar Street and 751 Russell Road. Uh, a developer is proposing uh, a special permit for senior assisted living and in independent living facility uh, at that corner. Um, we just got the plans today, so I really have not had a chance to, to look at them. When we're, and they didn't. We don't have the drainage calcs and things like that. And previous uh, projects at that corner, we obviously have been concerned about traffic and also drainage because the drainage comes our way. Uh, but also, it's uh, state roads, so uh, I don't know exactly when this is scheduled. Um, so you, don't, you don't know the square footage and number of units? Well, it's a five, sto five stories. I think it's two different buildings and 111 senior units. So it's a pretty significant uh, project. Um, it, it could. So uh, I'll uh, take a look at it. And uh, if need be, I'll put it on a future agenda. But I just wanted you to be aware uh, that that's pending. 111 senior units. I'm trying to figure out whether it gets over the uh, OSTA threshold. Yeah. Osta, it's on it. Huh? Osta has a number for it. Now, so. yeah. Well, historically, they did. Do have a date on there, Ryan? Uh, it's scheduled? <coughs> yeah. I think what he's referring to is Osta has a number for previous applications, you know, whatever they were proposing. Oh, so this, this, oh, this, this is the GIS number. site for DOT, like all their projects. I was just curious what the status was. It doesn't have anything. Okay. A couple apps next time. A couple apps next time. We the sign <coughs> the signage uh, subcommittee met, uh, had their first meeting. Uh, we got another meeting scheduled next week, I think. Yeah, next Thursday. I Thursday, think. I think. So we're moving that along. Um, so um, just anyone, I'll, I'll send out another reminder when we meet in case others others want to join in the fun. Five hundred B is that the cigar? Yes. They need their renewal for that. How long has that been? A year. Just a year. That was a year ago. Is it hmm. going to be on it every year? Or what? It's up to you guys. Uh, we just one, year, one year last year. Okay. I mean, I got a copy. Of this. Yeah, because we didn't have anything like it right. to judge for experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, I assume uh, we should all be taking our stuff home with us because you're not going to give us a new yeah, copy, right? Stuff on the <laughs> 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 <laughs>